and very good morning to all participants i think uh, today is the last third day uh, so another two days we are having and in between one sunday is there and this program is going to wind up by monday uh, so before that uh, most uh, important uh, area for that only i hope all of you have joined maximum of you that is uh, protein modeling how to uh, find the proper model and how to validate your model that is the first aspect and, and and second aspect is your of course drug designing so drug designing that entire concept is depending on the protein modeling because uh, drugs you are going to uh, uh, whatever the drugs you are using you are going to target with a particular protein and which particular protein is supposed to select and that protein what kind of conformation is there and how it is working uh, so before going to that uh, you need to understand very properly how you can able to model up, uh, if you are having a amino acid sequence with that particular protein structure so first i'll be telling the theoretical aspect what is the specific kind of algorithms we are using here and how uh, these entire process is continuing and then if i'll be uh, giving exposure with the uh, practical approach and what are the uh, tricky things you need to remember all the things i'll be mentioning here and not only that uh, if you are having a protein in your hand uh, immediately if you are going to looking for a uh, drugs like molecules uh, targeting to it and binding to the specific part of it so before going to that approach definitely you need to know what would be the active site of that protein where are the specific uh, amino acids are present and those amino acids can allow to bind that ligand or the drugs molecule so that aspect also i'm going to tell how to find the proper active site of a particular protein and how many active sites are supposed to be there so all those you need to know first because already i came to know you are doing the uh, your uh, mod uh, docking experiment so you came to know that uh, blind docking is there and definite kind of docking is there even rigid docking that uh, one concept is there so uh, if you are blind docking when you do not know where is the active site so directly you are using the ligand and you are using that and if you are using the rigid docking that is called the perfect docking so uh, what was the literature says that these are the uh, site of the protein can able to bind uh, with the various type of ligand so you are selecting only those particular region of your uh, protein molecule and then whatever the drugs you are selecting you are going to use of it so that will be our uh, secondary aspect so once you are going to do that particular experiment so before that definitely you need to know thoroughly about the protein structure and how to build the model of the protein how to find the active uh, site of the protein all these concrete definitions will help you to understand the docking parameter and the docking aspect so the docking related aspect the activity will be discussed tomorrow and today's our entire discussion will be there on the protein okay so let's start my actual presentation and i hope uh, so far whatever presentation i have given none of you became bored uh, <clears throat> yeah, is it uh, visible my screen hello yes sir okay fine thank you so our uh, discussion today on the protein and the protein structure so what is a protein uh, so all of you know the proteins are uh, basically building blocker of the biological system and uh, definitely it is made up of uh, 20 different type of amino acids and biological translational process whatever is there so that with the help of translational process this amino acid are synthesizing amino acids are uh one it is synthesizing it is making the uh, peptide bond and that's why it is joining with the other amino acid and uh, many number of amino acids once it is joining and it is going to make the complete please uh, uh, switch off if anybody's microphone is on kindly switch off 
so <coughs> that amino acids uh, will be joined together by the peptide bond now uh, this is the aspect from the different weight lab we already uh, know and different biochemistry book also writing this way molecular biology book also writing this way that uh, proteins are made up of these and that and the proteins are having actually four different level of structure primary structure secondary structure tertiary structure quaternary structure and different protein when it is synthesizing in the nascent form of course they will be having primary structure then uh, secondary tertiary quaternary and ultimately uh, once it is getting its higher order of structure it is going to do the biological function so before that all the protein will be looking like same that means they will be having only the peptide uh, compositions and they are made up of with the peptide bond so that is the simple structure of any kind of primary uh, primary simple structure of any kind of protein now this uh, amino acid composition containing chain once it is again uh, going for making uh, interbonding interbonding by means of hydrogen bond van der waal force disulfide and all those stuff and then again they are going to make two different varieties of structure and that is called the secondary structure that is the alpha helix and the beta sheet again alpha helix is having left handed and right handed different based on the uh, orientation of the amino acid and the beta sheet that is also parallel or an anti parallel uh, kind of structure it will be having and then the secondary structure again further Uh, going for making some kind of interaction with the other protein or it says they are only going for different type of folding so it is going to make the tertiary structure and there are also other kind of uh, different uh, physical forces will be involved and like that when the uh, similar kind of uh, structural aspect is joined together going to make the tertiary structure of the protein uh, for example is the hemoglobin so here uh, what are the heme structure and corresponding molecules whatever join together and their central part will be having iron at iron molecules so with that this particular entire structure of the protein is going to ready and in the hemoglobin uh, we know this is the st structure of the hemoglobin hemoglobin is having these are the basic kind of function and if you are wanted to understand whether in the uh, biological system hemoglobin is really present or not we can collect the blood and we can analyze the hemoglobin and that way will be confirmed yes hemoglobin protein is present but uh, here the discussion will be not to uh, use the wet lab here discussion is completely based on the in silico approach and that is completely based on the uh, dry lab approach uh, so here if uh, you are having a particular protein chain and if how you can able to understand this protein chain going to make such kind of uh, so and so secondary structure and from the secondary structure again this particular uh, protein chain how it is going to make the higher order of structure because a weight lab if you are continuing this kind of experiment it will take a long long time but if you are using the computational approach within very uh, short period of time with respect to a particular protein sequence we will come to know all kind of activity like physical parameter of the protein what are the amino acids are present all those then what type of structure it is going to make that also will come to know when this is making up secondary structure what kind of uh, your uh, hydrophobic hydrophilic amino acids will be there what exactly their position will be there and if it is going to make like um, membrane spanning domain containing protein like the example of g protein so it can uh, cross the biological membrane at least seven time so whether this uh, particular primary amino acid sequence containing protein uh, it is definitely in future going to make the uh, membrane spanning domain or it is going to span the biological membrane or not all aspect we can able to understand within a short period of time so before going to practical approach first you need to know that what kind of algorithm basically we are following uh, to extract such kind of information Right. So, with the primary structure of the protein, I'll be showing the practical aspect that if you are having the DNA sequence or the RNA sequence, uh, so how uh, the DNA and RNA sequence that server or the software is predicting, and based on that, what are the possibilities are there? Such so and so uh, kind of protein or peptide bond it is going to make that aspect will uh, come to know, and whatever the protein will be prepared. we are going to prepare from the particular dna and the rna structure that will be using for your, our further study 
so you will be able to understand better way the protein how it is uh, going to make the higher order of structure so protein uh, i am starting my lecture with the protein secondary structure prediction because primary structure prediction is a simple thing so the actual trickiness will start when you are going for the predicting the secondary structure and going to make the model of the protein okay so first aspect will be the secondary structure prediction and the secondary structure are two type you can see in the proteins are having alpha helix and the beta sheet uh, so most of the protein uh, it will be having if you are talking about the uh, complex structure they must have 50% at least the secondary structure composition and then all other kind of structural aspect may join with that and in this uh, 50% again 50% uh, to be found alpha helix and again almost near about 50% found the uh, beta pleated sheeted structure so alpha helix if i am talking alpha helix basically uh, having the spiral like structure and if we look at the turn of this every positions of this alpha helix they are almost 3.6 number of amino acids will be there and this amino acids of uh, already experimentally proof so this is the particular turn content so and so amino acid everything and the structure of this particular alpha helix it is basically based on the hydrogen bond okay so how hydrogen bonds are forming between the amino acids so based on that the alpha helix structure is going to form and if you look at that um, uh, hydrogen bond uh, have, uh, containing that particular activity or exactly where this hydrogen bonds are making so there we can see i plus 4 position that means uh, every after four amino acid this hydrogen bonds are going to make in this alpha helix structure and therefore the alpha helix is going to get the stability like that beta pleated sheet structure if you look uh, beta pleated structure please uh, switch off whoever uh, microphone is on kept on please switch off please switch off otherwise it is uh, my concentration i am breaking kindly switched off also oh, second aspect is the beta pleated sheeted structure so where we can see basically zigzag conformation of the protein and uh, what are the sheets are there it could be parallel and anti parallel different aspect is there but uh, in simple way we can tell the secondary structure of the protein uh, should be having like helix form like will be having the stand form or it could have the coils it will be having a uh, different type of uh, uh, different position that coil will be there and so on and basically this helix stand and the coil we can represent by this way h e and c h stands for helix e stands for stand and c stands for coil so when we are going to predict the secondary structure of the protein we are going to get these are the different terms and with the help of the terms it is going to denote this is the particular positions uh, this is the stretch of the amino acid going to make the helix and this is the stretch of amino acid going to make the stand and this is the stretch of amino acid going to make the your coils so uh, you need to understand the concept of it and the prediction is completely of the secondary structure have a regular arrangement of the amino acid and of course they are having uh, the stability by the different type of hydrogen bond so uh, how these hydrogen bonds are forming and why this i plus 4 concept has given if you are uh, predicting the secondary structure of the protein that time it will be uh, easy for us to understand so prediction pattern of the secondary structure has a number of application why we supposed to uh, predict the secondary structure of the protein because secondary structure itself it is providing the motif and the domain part of the protein and the motif and domain will be having different type of uh, consensus amino acids and that is only responsible for binding with the various ligand and if you talk about the enzyme so different domain can have the specific uh, active site and they are the respective substrate can able to bind so to understanding the domain and the motif concept we need to understand better the secondary structure of the protein second important things the secondary structure of the protein will be useful as i already mentioned it will be guiding us to design a particular ligand and to bind the ligand in that particular domain of the motif part of the protein and third important point this particular secondary structure is basically an intermediate step in the tertiary structure so how the higher level again tertiary and quaternary, quaternary structure is going to form that also if you wanted to understand we need to better way understand that what is the secondary structure of the protein 
so secondary structure of the protein uh, basically whatever the uh, parameters or whatever the algorithm so far we are having and whatever the uh, software approach we are using this is all all it is restricted to the globular proteins so we are thinking that all the proteins in the biological system it will be in the globular nature so how uh, those globular proteins can able to identify so based on the different algorithms are prepared so the globular proteins how we can identify if you wanted to know the secondary structure that is having ab initiation based method and second one is the homology based method and third one is the multiple sequence alignment based method so different approaches and different methods are there and all these of course uh, uh, methods especially the ab initiation based method and homology based method it is a statistical uh, based method so whatever the uh, things we can identify by this and uh, by using the different server or software how we are predicting the secondary structure of the protein of course that will be the very much authenticated because statistically significant value we are going to get over here and with respect to the each and every amino acid positions the lot of statistical uh, calculation will be there and finally the result whatever will be coming in front of your monitor you can uh, by closing your eyes you can use those particular structure so i'll be talking first about the ab initiation by uh, or it is called ab initio uh, so the pronunciation should be ab okay it is not like ab initio it is ab ab initiation based method so here uh, this is the based on the single query sequence so i am providing a particular sequence to the uh, database or the software the sequence whatever the alphabets are present that means the amino acids whatever is present so it is going to detect each and every amino acid and it is going to find out the relative propensity value of each and every amino acid this relative propensity value means what is the tendency that out of 20 uh, that particular amino acid would be present there so that is considered as the propensity value so that is going to calculate here and finally uh, that structure of the second uh, the secondary structure will be predicted so here as i mentioned lot of uh, your uh, statistical parameter we are using so that's why ab initiation based method and that homology based method whatever uh, process we are following so those process are pakka genuine and we can use whatever the secondary structure we are getting or what are the structure we are getting of the protein we can use it so ab initiation based method again is having uh, two different type one is the chow forsman uh, algorithmic method and second one is the gore method so chow forsman together uh, prepared a particular concept and most of the server is using the chow forsman and some server they are also using the gore method actually gore method is much more authenticated uh, if you talk about the um, uh, uh, acceptance of the chow man uh, chow forsman method and the gore method so gore method is much more accepted because gore method is bit modified method of the chow forsman method so gore g o r this three word stands for garnier so g stands for garnier and o stands for uh, osteospore and r stands for as the robson so these three together uh, make this particular gore algorithm and which is basically modification part of the chow forsman method and first this chow forsman method related algorithm 1970 uh, we uh, it has published in the journal of uh, uh, biophysical chemistry so therefore after that people have came to know uh, we can use this kind of concept for making the secondary structure so the chow forsman algorithm you can click on uh, this particular hyperlink you can able to see exactly how this algorithms have made so mathematical calculation you can get over there but uh, chow forsman algorithm it is basically depending on the propensity or the uh, intrinsic tendency of the every amino acid residues which are present in the provided sequence i repeat this is the indicating the propensity or the intrinsic tendency of the amino acid whatever it is present in the provided protein structure and by looking the tendency or the propensity we can understand that uh, where this alpha helix is going to form from the protein um, uh, the provided protein uh, amino acid structure and from where exactly the beta pleated sheet is going to form all those aspect because this aspect is completely depending on a particular table this table is the mathematically um, uh, calculated and with the statistically 
it is the uh, confirm that this is the propensity should be if for the alanine this is the propensity should be arginine all those and if you are talking about the alpha helix so we are providing the particular protein chain where the amino acids only will be present so now from those amino acid if they are finding that alanine and arginine all those are there so they are calculating the propensity value and based on the propensity value if they found uh, suppose uh, we are considering the eight first eight amino acid out of eight so majority of the amino acid if it is having the propensity level uh, that is going to uh, form the alpha helix then the software is predicting so and so amino acid up to this much is going to form the alpha helix then next stage of the amino acid will be considered and from there also try to find out the propensity value and there also majority of the amino acid if it is uh, giving the propensity value to form the beta stand then we are predicting or the software is predicting from so and so amino acid this particular stage of the amino acid is going to make the beta stand okay so this is the uh, basic concept of this propensity value and this propensity value this particular table prepared by the cho first man and how they have prepared i am telling it so basically if we uh, talk about the um, uh, alanine glutamic acid methionine they are uh, they are found commonly in the alpha helix whereas glycine proline these are if we uh, analyze the protein structure if we see the glycine and proline they are much more uh, likely found to the um, different folding part of the uh proteins so where the folding is going to happen where the turn is going to happen so they are maximum glycine protein all those found so this was the concept and based on that the statistical parameter they have applied and the table just now whatever i have uh, shown so they have prepared those table and the software is telling uh, all kind of amino acid with this particular table and finally they are predicting the seg uh, secondary structure of the protein so the calculation of this chow foshman method is quite simple so you just uh, remember what statement i am telling here suppose there are n residues in all known protein structure okay so there are having n residues in the protein structure number one out of which m residues are the helix residues okay therefore the total number of alanine suppose i am going to uh, consider the alanine only in the protein uh, chain whatever we have provided in that so the total number of alanine residues if it is y then of which x are going to form in the helix that means total number of residues whatever is there and out of that if we found y time the alanine is repeating in that particular segment and alanine that total propensity value if it is co correlating with the alpha helix formation then we that software is considering this is the alpha helix part for example another example the propensity of alanine to be in helix is the ratio of the proportion of the alanine in the helix over the proportion of the alanine in overall residues that means if, if we are using basically this formula x divided by m and whole divided by y by n so what is the x x i have mentioned so x is the uh, uh, which is indicating the helix formation tendency divided by m m is indicating so m residues are forming the helix everything divided by y y stands for alanine residues how many times is repeating and divided by total number of amino acid present in the protein so this is the simple formula this software is using to calculating the propensity value uh, of each amino acid so if the propensity for the residues we get equal 1.0 uh, for the helix uh, that is going to tell this is the helix formation value and if the propensity ratio we are getting uh, less than 1.0 so that is going to indicate uh, that is uh, uh, actually helix beginning is going to start from that particular area okay and if the propensity is larger than one that is going to tell that is more favorable portion or positions where exactly helix to be formed so this particular by based on this equation this ratio actually software will try to find out and based on this ratio we they will be predicting whether it can form the helix whether it can form the turn etc and the chow foshman develop a scoring table this is the scoring table what i mentioned so a similar way if they are calculate if, uh, if they are considering a stage of the amino acid so out of that whatever the amino acid can form maximum this uh, alpha helix if their total propensity value if it is crossing the um, uh, beta pitted sheet form uh, that amino acid then obviously that particular structure will be considered 
going to form the alpha helix only. And beta pTH uh, propensity value, if it is crossing that alpha helix, then we are considering that particular part is definitely going to make the beta pTH structure. So uh, for the alpha helix, the window size should be six. That means once you are providing, uh, suppose uh, 100 number of amino acids. So out of 100 amino acids, the software have been uh, made in such a way. So it is going to take the from first six amino acid, then seven to another six amino acid, then after that another six amino acid. That way, segment to segment, con uh, uh, once after another, they are going to consider the six six amino acid residues and they are going to calculate this propensity value okay so alpha helix for the window size is the six residues and out of the six residues if four residues are having the propensity value get than one okay so out of six i mentioned the majority okay out of six is the four they found having the propensity value together uh, get up than 1.0, then definitely software is going to predict that particular part or with that six amino acid, they are going to make the alpha helix. Okay. And the helical region is extended in the both the direction until the, uh, this pro propensity value of alpha helix score becomes smaller than 1.0. That means it will be continuing. So first six, then second six, then third six, like that it will be continuing. Okay, so until unless the um, value is coming lower than 1.0, that particular stage of that particular part will be considered it is going to make the alpha helix. Got it? And for the beta scan, that size is uh, is uh, five residues. Okay, there for alpha helix, there are six residues. For beta scan, they are considering the five residues. And I out of five, at least the three residues, their total propensity value, if it is um, coming in the range of a beta splitted sheet formation, then that particular stage of amino acid is considering forming the secondary structure of the beta pleated sheet. And this beta pleated sheet score, again, it will be stretched uh, from uh, next direction to the next. And finally, uh, when the beta pleated sheet, uh, this score, it is matching with the alpha helix, then it is considering before that the beta pleated sheet to be formed. And again, from here, alpha helix structure is going to produce. So this is the way basically Cho Fosman method has predicted, and that is the another important parameter for finding the secondary structure of the protein. Now, uh, here is having another one kind of problem. What is the problem? That is, if both the type of secondary structure prediction overlap in a certain region, that means uh, that alpha helix and the beta pleated sheet both to be possible to form over there if the such kind of amino acid composition is present. In such case, a prediction is made both uh, based on the following criteria. That is, if total propensity value of alpha, it is greater than total propensity value of beta, then that particular site, though based on the amino acid, both of them are having tendency to form the either alpha or the beta pleated sheet, but total propensity value is going to consider that time and based on that, if you found the propensity value of alpha, if it is more than propensity value or total propensity value of beta, then that particular portion is going to definitely form the alpha helix. So this way, the cho forstmann method is working. And second important method that is again, as I mentioned already, modification of the this cho forstmann method that is called the Gore method. So GOR GOR, this is the based on the three different people, how uh, the, all the three together, they have uh, made this particular algorithm. Uh, so it is also depending on the propensity of each residue to be one of the four conformational state like helix, stand, turn, and the coil. So here only alpha helix and beta pleated sheet, the Cho Fosman method is telling, whereas the GOR method is introducing where to be formed the actual stand, where actual turn will come and where the coil is going to form. So these another few important parameter included in this Cho Fosman method um, by these three people and ultimately that is uh, famous as a GOR method. So it takes short range of interaction of the neighboring residues in the account. So it is considering the neighboring residues. Actually, this Gore method is very, very much useful to uh, your uh, drug designing aspect. If you do not know, uh, if uh, with respect to the protein-protein docking or the 
a protein ligand docking if you do not know where exactly my ligand is going to bind that is the uh, blind docking approach if you are taking so that time this gore method will be helping us because gore method will analyze the um, the if i am predicting so and so positions at uh, these are the amino acid would be my target amino acid so uh, i am providing i am expecting this could be the target amino acid where my ligand or the protein can bind so immediately this gor method what it will do they will be uh, taking those amino acid and they will be comparing uh, from both the left and the right hand si right sides of the protein where if by chance if there is having chance that those particular amino acid to be present in those surrounding region or not so uh, if they are finding there is uh, it is not present to the surrounding region then whatever the amino acid we have um, uh, mentioned there it is the interacting amino acid software based on that it is going to give the result and if they found the surrounding part also present such kind of amino acid and what could be the propensity that that could be present there everything they are going to calculate and based on that they are creating the grid box this grid box is another important parameter when we are considering the docking so what is the grid box i hope already sir has explained uh, i'll be explaining again tomorrow so anyhow this gor method it is going to consider the neighboring residues and all neighboring residues also they are uh, keeping in consideration and finally based on that the tan coil all this particular two concept also they have introduced so here the uh, window length uh, should be 7 so at a stage seventh residues they are going to consider and the sum of the propensity score for all residues of each of the four state resulting in the four summated values that means seven residues they have considered now out of seven residues um, uh, what are the uh, most probabilities there or what is the most chances are there the propensity value to be reaching uh, to forming the alpha helix or the propensity value is be reaching to making the stand or the turn or the coil so all the four at a time with respect to the seven residues it is going to confirm and based on that who is giving to the highest score and it uh, it is going to consider that highest score and it is telling that particular position to be a coil or particular position to be a stand or it is going to make helix or it is going to make the coil so the highest score state defines the conformational state for each center residue in the window so uh, if we found that uh, suppose one stage of amino acid if it is there suppose first three it is going to tell make form the alpha helix next three is suppose going to tell it is make the stand and next uh, another three it is going to tell the turn and rest three it is going to tell the coil so um, now how to consider this is going to make the turn or the coil or the stand or the helix in such case if the turn this particular propensity uh, conditions if it is uh, more than the helix than the stand as well as the coil then it is considered the turn is in between that means in the turn will be here and before that alpha helix and the beta stand could be present and after turn again some kind of coil will be there so this way that uh, 3d structure with respect to the secondary uh, conditions of the protein secondary structure of the protein by using the gore method we are going to get but all this method having certain kind of limitation i'm not talking about the limitation so yeah, i hope you understood that propensity value again this is the particular table you can see that turn um, uh, some kind of result is given with respect to the alanine uh, so alanine if it is hel helix is forming 1.42 the result should come and beta pitted sheet if it is making 0.83 need to come and if it is making the turn 0.66 has to come like that alanine and all other amino acid if we look so all 20 amino acids are here so with respect to all amino acid Uh, if it is going to make the alpha helix what could be the propensity value a beta pitted sheet what could be the propensity value and if it is going to make turn what could be the propensity value so you are following software also it is following this kind of table and based on that uh, by using the chow forsman method or the gore method the secondary structure of the protein is going to be solved and uh, next method is the homology based method so homology based method Uh, uh, people have uh, people are using after 1990 okay so before 1990 I, uh, there i mentioned 1973 first time that they have published this paper and people have came to know and then people work on this particular aspect and in the year of 1990 so uh, this homology based method is also to be applicable for uh, solving the secondary structure of the protein then people came to know so before 1990 there is uh, only uh, the usable method was either gore method otherwise chow forsman method 
So in the 1990, when this uh, uh, particular homology-based method approach has come, so here uh, we are going to use uh, that uh, database. Okay, in the database, whatever the am I, uh, protein chains or protein structure is already present, and what are the protein sequences are already there. My provided sequence, it is going to match with the database all kind of protein sequence. And based on that, uh, we are going to get the blast output or the first output. We are looking the blast and the first output. And there, uh, the identity score will be important. So uh, we can uh, consider more than 35% identity or more than 40% identity. If we found between uh, my sequence and the database sequence, then those particular alignment to be considered. And based on those alignment, we can uh, finally uh, build the homology-based protein structure. So this is the uh, actual concept behind the homology-based method. And here, close protein homologous should be adopted, the same secondary and the tertiary structure. Uh, that is our... Um, assumptions here so if you my structure if it is making and we know this is the homolog uh, homologous structure or homologous protein with whom uh, this database um, the my sequence have compared and if they are found a 35 percent or more than 35 percent of identity is there so we are predicting so as we are, my sequence have compared with the homologous sequence uh, so homologous sequence structure and all the function already uh, it has um, uh, present in the database so we are predicting my sequence also uh, what similar kind of structure it is going to make and similar kind of function also going to do in the biological system. So this is the main concept of homology based method. So homology based method, we can use the, uh, this is the way. So first we are using, uh, we are aligning the sequence. So here multiple sequence alignment will be continued. And from this multiple alignment sequence, each line will, will be observed. And from the each line after looking, then we are going to actual first time predicting the secondary structure of individual sequence by using the Gore method. So here first the Gore method will be utilized. So Gore method just now I mentioned. So what is the uh, based on the propensity value, whether it can make the uh, helix, it can make the turn, or it can make the coil, etc. So first it will be analyzed by the Gore method. Fine. So after analyzing the Gore method, so whatever the sequences are coming very closer. Okay, so those closer sequence again, it will be aligned. Okay, so this alignment is the actual perfect alignment we can tell because Gore method will tell you so whatever the sequences here we have used for multiple sequence alignment process with respect to the each sequence, these lines are indicating one one sequence with respect to the each sequence, they are going to calculate the Gore process and the, based on that they are predicting so and so helix and so and so turn supposed to make. Okay, so now uh, whatever the helix and turns I'm talking, if uh, the last one is, if it is my uh, sequence, I wanted to know about this sequence. So my sequence also, Gore method to be applied and from there also somehow we can get the helix, turn, coil, etc. Now it is going to tally or going to match with all other above sequence. So suppose first sequence uh, and my sequence exactly from starting to 10th uh, number of amino acid going to make the helix. So, and first sequence also is making the helix. So this helix part and this helix part will be taken together. What kind of amino acids are there? They'll be putting here. Second, uh, suppose uh, next of the 10 amino acid from my sequence, it is having uh, like beta pleated sheet formation propensity. And suppose the second line, whatever is mentioned for each, they found the same positions wise having beta pleated sheet forming the propensity. Then they, this particular position, whatever the amino acid is there and my sequence, whatever amino acid is there, they'll be tally. And finally, after my sequence, that particular uh, sequence is going to put. So like that, this process will be continue. And that's why I'm telling this is the actual alignment process. Now this actual tallying will be there. Actual uh, means uh, comparisons will be here. And if, uh, based on that, finally, my sequence will be considered. And this sequence, what kind of secondary tertiary quaternary structure is going to make database uh, by using the graphical mode, that structure is going to present in front of you. So this is the way basically uh, this uh, homology based method is continuing. Most of the uh, server, whatever freely available, like uh, Swiss model prediction, they are basically following the homology based modeling. And that is one of the best uh, so far, one of the best modeler which can make the uh, protein model. 
okay so they are uh, similar kind of mechanisms they are following uh, to getting or to giving the idea about the secondary structure of the protein and finally modeling of the protein and third method that is the prediction with the neural network so artificial neural network or the neural network already i have explained before in the details so there will be having three layer one will be a input layer and uh, second layer will be the hidden layer and last layer will be the output layer so there this net artificial neural network uh, we, uh, it is going to use so for uh, using the artificial neural network what will going to happen first that protein my uh, query protein it will be compared with the database some protein and if it is found 100% or near about 90% um, matching it is their homology it is there then uh, this 90% homology matching sequence which is present in the database it is taking the sequence from it it is providing the sequence as a feed in the artificial neural network okay and with that will be our reference so with the reference the whatever the output it is coming now my sequence will be putting as a feed and it is going to compare uh, with the reference sequence similar way output if uh, whether it is coming or not if it, they are finding the similar way output is coming or certain uh, percentage or certain position the similarity it is coming they are considering that particular similarity wala portions and rest of the portions somehow they are going to tell you this is the gap because that particular position had not been determined perfectly in that case we need to go for some other aspect uh, to filling the gap to making the loop all those and that way uh, we are proceeding with the artificial neural network so this artificial neural network is not so much famous i mentioned because uh, this uh, homology based modeling so far is very very best method to finding the protein uh, secondary structure or completely modeling of the protein in both the cases uh, so the, this is the, the actual uh, secondary structure prediction aspect and i'm going to show the uh, respective practicals uh, uh, how this secondary structure to be uh, find out uh, so first i'm i'm telling about the primary structure of the protein so how we can we can you can get the primary structure of the protein and what way we can select this is the best primary structure okay so for that uh, a bit a little bit i can zoom it uh, so for that you can first open uh, the google and you can type the expressy translate tool and open okay so this you have to type and then this is the particular things is going to come in front of you and you just click on the translate total expressy okay so if you are clicking on it so this is the actual server home page is going to open and here a dna or the rna sequence in the faster format you need to paste got it so uh, we are uh, primary sequence means it is directly coming from the uh, dna to mrna and from mrna to protein so either you need to provide here rna sequence otherwise you need to provide here dna sequence and how it is translating basically uh, software is going to predict that got my point so uh, you are pasting uh, uh, the sequence either dna or the rna here and rest of the option uh, need not to change leave it is all this like that and finally once you are providing the sequence so you need to click on the translate so down the translate option is there uh, so you just click on the translate once you are clicking on the translate this kind of result will appear in front of you okay so you can uh, see here it is written open reading frames are highlighted with the red so wherever, wherever this red part you can see in this uh, sequence so you can understand this is the actual part which is going to encode the protein that means open reading frame they have mentioned here but it you are providing the uh, nucleotide sequence but translation means the protein how it is going to synthesized and how the primary structure of the protein is appearing you are first analyzing that so by using this particular tools expressive this translationary tool you are understanding what kind of protein sequence to be formed by my this provided dna or the rna sequence now here this red part wherever is present maximum that is going to give you the proper primary structure if you look at here the second line here some part is there again some part portion is there again some gap is there again some portion of red it is highlighted fine that means if you are selecting this part 
so you are not going to get the stretch of amino acids so you are not going to get the uh, in the secondary structure your uh, secondary structure prediction or the uh, modeling cases you are not going to get the perfect result so you have to remember only out of these result the uh, line or the particular frame one frame two frame three whatever is mentioned which is going to give the maximum stretchable result and here again one more thing you need to you have to notice uh, that is uh, uh, you have to notice it that is uh, the first part okay so the first part okay so first part it is highlighted m and from there actually the red highlighting portion started and it has started till l after that one gap or the minus symbol it is presented okay so we know the methionine is the first uh, amino acid to be encoded by the biological system so m stands for methionine so always the starting um, uh, amino acid uh, you need to consider of whether it is starting from methionine or not so methionine here it is starting after that in between also methionine methionine methionines are present i was telling i think yesterday or day before yesterday so when the software is predicting it it will give the emphasis on the first starting zone and it will go or uh, or it will analyze until unless the uh, stopping codon it is getting so here this minus is indicating the please switch up microphone please switch up microphone please switch up microphone so here this is the starting codon or uh, that is methionine is it is going to encode so amino acid methionine it is present and this is the uh, stopping codon okay exactly this minus is indicating here they got the stopping codon so this is the actual protein it is going to produce um, with respect to my provided sequence they have highlighted and you should not if you come to the next uh, uh, result so here also they are predicting the uh, from the second frame here it is having methionine um, but here they are getting the stopping codon so only few amino acid to be present there like the third one if you look there also they are getting this is the methionine and then they are getting the stopping codon okay so you have to consider only that result which are having the stretch of highlighted portions and the starting amino acid is methionine and the dash is indicating that is the stopping codon and uh, if you further if you look at down so you are going to uh, get many more result so uh, if coming down you can see the result this highlighted portion slowly slowly it is coming down uh, so uh, already i mentioned the methionine should be starting point and that should be highlighted with the red and negative minus symbol is indicating that is the stopping codon and where exactly the translational process is going to stop so this way uh, you first get the idea how from a particular dna or the rna by using uh, the normal uh, server approach Uh, so how the secondary uh, structure you are predicting uh, it is not exactly looking like, uh, it is coming like that here main concept is uh, give the emphasis on the starting codon and give the emphasis on the stopping codon so based on the starting codon and stopping codon uh, in between what, if it is repeating the starting codon also it is not going to consider that only the very beginning starting codon whatever is there from there it will start uh, counting or it is start computing and until unless it is reaching to the stopping codon it will be continue so this you can use this expressive translator tool for primary structure prediction of the protein so this way you can do it so uh, please note it down uh, express a are having different different options only if you are typing express a uh, you will be confused because lot of things will open which one supposed to click and which one supposed to use you will be confused so directly type uh the ex uh, expressive translate tool okay translate expressive tool if you are typing then also it will not going to come exactly you need to type expressive translate tool and open if you are typing this is not this is mandatory okay it's not mandatory actually just you type expressive translate tool and you paste your dna or the rna sequence uh, if you are not providing fasta format also it is not going to um uh, create any kind of problem as such just alphabet if you are pasting then also it will work okay and rest all the options whatever is given if you are clicking so here uh, that um, first alphabet methionine here it is presented with the capital m 
and here it will be writing methionine for MET, valine for VL, tyrosine for TYR, like that. The presentation will be different. The uh, predicting result will be the same, only the presentation will be different with your uh, uh, protein sequence. That's all. And the rest of the experiment, whatever you are going to continue, you require the single letter alphabet. If you are using that MET, TYR, um, that LIH, it is not going to support. Okay, so that's why you require the single letter abbreviation, this particular stage of amino acid. You need to copy it and you can paste to your note file or the Wattpad uh, or Watt file so that you can be able to use this particular predicted uh, primary sequence and you can use it for your further experiment. So primary uh, um, uh, sequence how we are getting, I already have mentioned. And with that, uh, two more things I'll be telling before coming to the actual protein modeling. Uh, that is, uh, yeah, just a minute, I'll be telling. Ah, so first one, the XPASA PROTPAM, already it is open, just a, yeah, XPASA PROTPAM, okay. So XPASA PROTPAM, that is useful for protein physical and the chemical properties prediction. So uh, before coming, I'm repeating, before coming to the modeling, before coming to the actual secondary st um, uh, structure prediction of the protein, these are very, very crucial and the vital stage for the research. You need to know better way, this sequence of DNA and RNA, what kind of protein it is going to code. And based on the uh, sequence of the primary amino acids, whatever present in the protein, uh, you need to understand what kind of physical and the chemical properties are there. So why, whatever the amino acid it is going to uh, synthesize with respect to the each amino acid, the physical and the chemical property of the protein, you definitely need to study. Then only secondary uh, st uh, protein, uh, structure prediction or the protein modeling big, big thing you are doing. Okay, so this is another fundamental things. So you need to type expasive protpam. Okay, expasive protpam. So this is useful for physical and the chemical property studies, uh, the prediction of the protein. So you are uh, typing in the Google and whatever the page it is coming, you are clicking on PROTPAM tool and you are clicking on the PROTPAM tool. Then uh, you can look at here, you are clicking on, so we are clicking over each. So immediately the home page is appearing. So PROTPAM, this is the home page. And here uh, you can directly can and write the accession number of the uh, particular protein if you know or accession number of the gene if you know directly type here otherwise you need to paste the protein sequence here i repeat you need to paste the protein sequence here so after pasting the protein sequence you can go for compute so paste the primary sequence of the protein and click on the compute parameter so primary sequence of the protein means what just the, i have explained that how to derive the primary structure of the protein. So you can select the primary structure of that protein by copying that particular compute stage highlighted red portions and you are pasting over here and then you are computing it. So paste primary sequence of the protein and click on the compute parameter. Once you are pasting and clicking on the compute parameter, you are getting this kind of result. Hmm. So user provided sequence, this is the sequence I have provided and the 10, 10, 10, like that amino acid wise, they have uh, grouped that entire uh, sequence of amino acid, what was present in my protein and down actual that result they have explained. So down, if you look at, you can see, I just zoom it. So you can see the first, it is, take, it is mentioned theoretical PI value. So all of you know, what is the PI value for protein? Okay, isoelective focusing point of this protein, so with respect to my protein sequence, uh, primary sequence of the protein, they have determined that what is the uh, actual isoelectric point. And then if you look at here, so how, uh, what are the uh, amino acids are present? ALA or A stands for alanine. So how many times alanine was there in the sequence uh, that is there mentioned and the percentage with respect to the total number of amino acids also they have mentioned. Next arginine 22 times, uh, ASN, that is the aspartic acid, four times. So like that, all the amino acids, how many times repeated in my protein sequence, 
that also they have mentioned here and with respect to their percentage percentage uh, this is 27 if the total number of amino acids is suppose 500 with respect to the 500 27 means how much percentage they have mentioned okay and uh, bzx that means no other um, unpredicted amino acids are there in your sequence that's why 008 is mentioned and then it will be mentioned the total number of negatively charged present in uh, in your protein so negatively charged with respect to the aspartic acid and the glutamic acid so total aspartic acid and glutamic acid related negatively charged present 26 whereas the total number of positively charged residues present arginine and lysine total present 29 so positive residues as it is present more definitely the pro protein is going to have the positive charge okay so you got the idea how uh, the protein will be having uh, positive uh, residues more and negative residues more based on the charge i am talking and finally if you further if you scroll down they will be given like a total carbon number hydrogen number nitrogen sulfur oxygen how many number of present so of course uh, you know that amino acids are made up of these are the basic compositions okay basic atoms will be there in the amino acid so carbon presents so many number hydrogen is so many number nitrogen is so many number etc so atomic composition mentioned then atomic formula with respect to this carbon hydrogen nitrogen oxygen so atomic formula they have mentioned so total number of atom how many present that also mentioned and further below it is given the extinction coefficient value uh, so uh, extinction coefficient value why it is important because uh, if you are wanted to quantify the protein in the biological system suppose same protein is going to translate you have isolated purified you wanted to quantify so which particular range will be proper quantification range okay so that is going to tell by this extension coefficient so here uh, per, uh, per m per centimeter it is telling 280 nanometer so with respect to the water uh, so you need to take the water as a blank and then this protein if you are dissolving 280 nanometer you can uh, easily uh, can find out that in the uh, 1 ml or 10 ml how many quantity of that particular protein is present uh, so this is also again it is depending on the total number of amino acids what are the present and all those okay based on that this particular extension coefficient will be calculated uh, next uh, this absorbance this is all related to the extension coefficient the beard's lambert's law how uh, it is connected and then uh, estimation of half-life so somehow in the biological system it could be of 30 hours for mam mammalian reticulocyte in vitro kali experimental approach they have used and there they found this protein to be 30 hours of uh, half-life or sometimes it would be greater than 20 hours in case of the yeast in vivo experimental model they have used and greater than 10 hours they found in case of the e coli so same kind of protein if it is going to uh, translate in the other biological system so what could be the half life of it because half life also one kind of uh, good uh, character uh, once we are uh, going to tell the physical chemical properties of the protein so half life also important and further uh, if we uh, scroll down you can see the instability index like uh, uh, instability index is computed by this much that means instability index it is uh, based on this is the actually reference and this is the actual cut up value based on that this half life they have calculated okay so this is the another important things definitely as i mentioned before before you are going to predict the uh, secondary structure of the protein and you can go further with your protein this particular sequence all those data definitely you must have in your hand and you just remember the pi calculation and that is uh, we need to do the titrations in the uh, lab uh, so with the 0.1 normal NOH and 0.1 uh, ml of um, hcl we need to titrate the protein and then we can able to find out the pi value okay by taking the average ph you can uh, divide it by two if you are doing you can get the pi value so within a fraction of second uh, here with the help of software we are getting it everything in our hand even the proteins molecular weight everything it is mentioned so when you are uh, going to use the total protein in the gel so from here uh, you may predict that from the gel what could be the uh, your molecular weight of the entire protein that idea also you are getting from here so this is very very much useful uh, thing express a uh, to understand the uh, protein primary con uh, conditions what it is there etc next uh, similar type of uh, another server or software you can able to use that is the pip draw 
okay p p d r a d r a w so pep draw if you are typing in the google so what are the home page it is appearing you just uh, click on that pep draw and you are going to get the uh, you are going to reach to the home page of it so you are clicking on the pep draw so here you your pep draw that is tulane university um, sweden uh, they are basically um, uh, design this and so pep draw if you are opening so just look at here this is the um, dialog box so where you can uh, paste the sequence okay primary uh, structure of the protein or primary sequence of the protein you can paste and no need to use the uh, any kind of uh, first of format just to provide the sequence otherwise uh, you can click here this is kind of calculator kind of thing is there so suppose if you are clicking on the alanine it will come alanine if you are clicking on glutamic acid it will come to the glutamic acid that means you can draw your protein by using this calculating approach what my point so uh, yeah this option also it is available here and uh, otherwise you can use this particular primary sequence of the protein and you can paste over here and just after pasting you can go and clicking the drop peptide so once uh, you are clicking on it so below you can see the peptide they have drawn uh, so this is the uh, chain of amino acid definitely uh, it will be there so they have drawn the peptide and at the same time uh, what is my sequence and what is the length of the sequence that mass of the sequence everything has mentioned only uh, drawback of this only the 60 alphabet 60 amino acid up to 60 amino acid they can calculate not more than that that's why the length they have mentioned here 60 whereas before it was mentioned something else right so this is the uh, drawback of this pep draw so only the uh, 60 uh, alphabet they can consider uh, for detecting the uh, length mass molecular weight and the net charge uh, hydrophobicity extension coefficient etc this is not so much useful but um, uh, within short period of time uh, if you are having from the literature one thing you got the idea this hot stage of the protein uh, is having so and so so immediately you can draw this protein from here by clicking all these amino acid residues you can draw the protein and you can use that for your your um, uh, experimental purpose and uh, next is the uh, protein domain so uh, this is a, another important part so domain of the protein also need to predict and then whether the secondary structure we have uh, the uh, software has detected perfectly or not you need to uh, think on that particular aspect and this domain aspect also useful for modeling the protein so uh, protein domain uh, so by using this interpro embl ebi you can able to use the uh, you can able to find out the domain what are the condition of the domain of the protein is there okay ebi interpro you need to type and then you are going to get so and so uh, home, uh, things is going to appear in front of if your monitor you just need to click on interpro embl ebi so before coming uh, to actual this particular domain concept just i want to give the idea um, uh, that uh, how it is present in the what is the meaning of the motive and what is the meaning of the domain so this motive and domain both are the uh, functional site of the protein and here uh, if we talking about the enzyme here in the domain which is going to make the active site there only the substrate can bind or with respect to the ligand and protein interaction that is the site where uh, specific amino acid to be present and uh, there only the ligand can able to interact so the motif uh, and domain uh, this concept is motif is a short conserved sequence pattern associated with the distinct function of a protein or the dna okay so motif like we are having this concept zinc link uh, finger motif so where a uh, specific transcriptional factor uh, that center will be having zn plus 2 ion and that is exactly binding to the specific part of the dna and uh, helping in the uh, controlling the uh, translational activity in the eukaryotic system so there that uh, motif should be present in the dna level motif to be also present in the protein level this is the very short stage of the nucleotide of the amino acid sequence where the uh, ligand can able to bind where the specific molecule can able to bind by looking that particular sequence composition and domain it is a uh, again it is a very conserved uh, sequence definitely to be found in the protein or the uh, dna or the rna level especially the dna and the protein level so it is a very conserved uh, kind of uh, conditions or pattern we can found and it is defined as a independent functional and the structural unit 
okay independent functional and the structural unit domain need not to be present always to the core part of the protein domain can be present to the surface part of the protein and that is is you have to understand because when uh, the protein ligand interaction we talk so the ligand maximum time it can bind to the surface part of the protein and uh, very rare chances are there if uh, the domain can go directly to the active side and uh, blocking the protein actually uh, that um, uh, allosteric site of any kind of enzyme enzymatic protein so allosteric site is kind of domain it is present to the other site of the active site in the enzyme so there also can ligand can go and bind and control the functional activity of the core part of the protein so domain is very much conserved uh, so motive also it is conserved but motive is very short stage of the part uh, comparatively to the domain and uh, motive uh, it is uh, domain it cannot be uh, present always to the central part of the protein it can be to the surface part also and it is longer than motive as i already mentioned and uh, uh, domain should contain at least the 40 residues to 700 residues so this many if you have a, with a short domain means it might minimum 40 residues of amino acid should be present and maximum bigger domain means 700 uh, amino acid residues should be present or on an average uh, if you tell uh, if we uh, as per the um, uh, different experimental procedure we can found uh, with a similar homologous group of protein near about 100 different residues containing uh, domains will be present so this motive and domain is always useful for evolutionary concept uh, to understand the evolution of the protein to understand the evolution of the dna or the rna because as these are the uh, conserved region so we can target this particular region to identify what kind of protein it is and what kind of relations are there between all such of protein so this is a brief idea of the domain and the uh, motif and uh, basically uh, there is a no proper as such uh, concept to or server or software to predict the motif itself but domain prediction is much important than the motif that's why all algorithms uh, whatever is there it is predicting the domain fine because dark designing all this aspect already I mentioned it is correlating with the domain concept of the protein so let's see uh, how this uh, actually uh, domain is working where i was i think expressive put from ios yeah so ebi uh, interpro that is a useful more very good and very much useful user friendly uh, server for detecting the domain part of the protein so you are opening the home page of it and you are providing the uh, first sequence here so again i'm going to use the first sequence whatever i have predicted for uh, from the respective nucleotide to uh, particular primary sequence of the protein the same sequence we are providing here in the first format and uh, this first format means definition line is not required here if you are clicking the greater than symbol automatically it will appear just you can paste the alphabets here and after uh, pasting if everything is perfect then automatically uh, that valid sequence it will be given tick and the green if this particular things will come if it is your sequence is wrong or uh, some definition line you have pasted by chance it is not going to work out it will be showing invalid uh, input of your sequence so by, uh, if everything is perfect it is going to tell you valid sequence and as it is showing the valid sequence uh, nothing else we need to do just we need to go on the search we need to click on the search and immediately uh, this is the uh, domain result or the domain concept is going to come in front of you so here these bar are indicating so in the databases different protein databases whatever the different uh, homologous or similar type of proteins are there it has knocked to the door of each databases those proteins and it had compared uh, with the nucleotide amino acid to amino acid and they found these are the domain picture so this is the graphical picture so any one of this particular line if you are uh, just putting your um, mouse and just uh, single click if you are doing so immediately it is telling we found with respect to my protein interpro homologa super family that insulin like uh, domain insulin like factor like insulin like means insulin growth factor like binding domain they have predicted and 42 to 129 this much amino acid uh positions actually it is going to create the domain like anyone i have click on this particular uh, more brighter this particular color so i got it even i have checked it with the all this particular color whatever is provided 
so if you if all this color also have checked everybody has predicted this is the only 42 to 129 this particular position of amino acid going to make the perfect domain structure of the protein got it and extremely uh, to, uh, below it will be mentioned what could be the function of this particular domain so first is the biological process uh, whether uh, what kind of biological process means how uh, this particular sequence in the databases they have derived that is indicating here is indicating none and molecular function of course it is hormonal activity it is having as I already mentioned insulin like growth factor so this is kind of hormones so basically the domain is having hormonal activity so the domain whatever is creating that is uh, insulin kind of thing is going to bind over there and the geo that is the gene number also it is mentioned which particular gene as per the um, uh, gen bank this particular sequence is uh, going to encode that also mentioned and uh, cellular component that is the extracellular region basically it will be found so not only you, you can understand here uh, not only you are able to predict the domain so the domain what kind of function supposed to be in the biological system and where exactly uh, located that particular domain so everything is going to tell to you that's why it is very very much useful to predicting the domain structure of the protein similarly EMBI smart this is another uh, server you can use for predicting the domain so EMBI, uh, EMBI smart you can type okay so do only smart if you are typing so it will be taking to different type of um, uh, your um, uh, shopping mall okay so such kind of um, connection it is there smart shopping mall um, it is there in the Delhi and the Punjab some area uh, so it will be giving you the shopping uh, shopping malls that the different uh, picture so unless you are writing EMBI uh, and then smart, you are not going to come to this particular page. So EMBI smart, if you are typing, so you are coming this way. So you just click on the smart main page. So this option and you are going to get, this is the home page. Okay. And here uh, again, uh, you can uh, give the sequence ID. This is optional. It is not mandatory. So just you paste your protein sequence in the first format. Okay. And here you can give the definition line or you may not give the definition line, doesn't matter. So only the first format means the getter than symbol followed by the alphabet should be there. So once you are pasting it, you can uh, click. These are all uh, things you can click one by one. Uh, like uh, only uh, the PFAM domains you are going to uh, consider or you can going to consider all uh, here, if you are going to uh, consider all uh, kind of thing like signal peptide domain, internal repeating domain, intrinsic protein disorder domain. So all with this domain, you wanted to tally your, with your protein predicted domain or not. So you need to confirm from here. Otherwise, always by uh, default, it will be given the click only on the PFAM. Got it? So I have, I have clicked it here. So I wanted to check with all. Uh, let me uh, see what kind of result it is giving rest here you need not to change anything so let it be uh, everything empty and just you click on the uh, sequence smart okay this option you need to click and once you are clicking uh, again you can get the similar uh, result this is the domain they have predicted so insulin uh, growth insulin binding growth factor like uh, domain they have predicted we just previously also uh, you have seen that it has predicted the same kind of domain here also it is predicting the same kind of domain including the domain uh, structure also it has given suppose it will be looking like this and I have uh, click on the various options like uh, signal peptide domain and internal uh, uh, repeating domains whatever is there so with all respect to it it has given the result okay so with the EGF so it got the uh, particular domain so where it is starting 45 it is stopping with the 128 so so many amino acid is going to make this domain and if I lose code they found with them. that means my protein predicted domain and along when they are compared with this EGF, they found it is matching and that way they have predicted here also. Like uh, something, whatever they have predicted, whatever I have given click based on that, this entire domain like informations, uh, we are going to get. And, and, and if you are uh, clicking okay. on. Uh, and if you are clicking on, if you are clicking on, uh, are clicking on any other kind of um, sequence here, so if you wanted to look the domain sequence so just here the uh, uh, hyperlink whatever is given you just single click on that hyperlink you are going to get this domain is having this kind of amino acid compositions so you can understand as your protein 
um, uh, these also having similar kind of domain. So that means your protein, this particular uh, sequence, sequentially going to prepare such kind of structure. So this is a concept of domain. And uh, I mentioned all uh, hyperlink, whatever is given, just give a single click. And all cases you are going to get the exactly similar kind of result. Uh, so this is the condition of uh, domain prediction. Then PFAM directly can type to the PFAM, and you can open the home page. And here, after opening the home page, you just click on the sequence search. After clicking on the sequence search, uh, you just paste your sequence. And once you are pasting your sequence, you are getting the this kind of domain result. So here also they have mentioned that uh, starting part, ending part, and uh, if, uh, this is the uh, second uh, starting part and ending part. So what are the uh, position different uh, domain uh, to be possible to have from my particular protein sequence that also they are going to present here. And if you click on the uh, any of this particular uh, clone, okay, this particular part, if you are clicking, or just simply if you are clicking on the show, so it is going to give you the sequence and how they have compared, where exactly they found the matching part is there and all that aspect you are getting in your system. So this is the very, very important things I'm telling again and again. So this hyperlink portions, it has matched with the which database, which particular protein and which article it has published before. Uh, so this is the correct one, all the reference, everything you are going to get. So this way, uh, you we need to understand that uh, what is the domain and what kind of uh, uh, what is called motif this supposed to be present along with your uh, primary structure of the protein. So all aspects you are keeping in your mind along with the physical chemical properties of the protein and then uh, what kind of domain and motif etc. It is predicting everything we are keeping in your mind and then only we can proceed for secondary structure prediction of the protein. Okay. So secondary structure prediction of the protein. So best one is the, uh, uh, um, according to me, or uh, according to me in the sense, uh, whatever the literature I have gone through, whatever the literature with the protein uh, structure related aspect we have studied. So everywhere they mention they are using the FIRE2 or else ITSR. And for modeling purpose, they, have, they are using the Swiss model or else ITSR. Basically ITSR and the Swiss model, these are for modeling purpose, okay? And I'm talking for the uh, secondary structure prediction. So you can go for uh, size spread. Uh, this is uh, one kind of thing is there. You can go for, otherwise uh, you can uh, go for any other like 5DT, uh, 5D2, all those, okay? So it's just simple way. If you wanted to understand, uh, then the size spread is better. And if you really wanted to work out on the uh, modeling level, and you have really wanted to publish your paper, then you need to definitely use the FIRE2 ITSR or the Swiss modeling uh, process. Okay, uh, so I'm going to uh, uh, tell you first uh, the secondary model prediction uh, with the size spread, how it is happening as the theory part I have completed. Uh, I think this practical part already um, uh, you have come across. Uh, so you are going to type the size spread and this is the home page it is coming, uh, not home page, the Google page it is coming. You are clicking on that size spread work, workbench, UCL CBS Bioinformatics. So uh, they are taking care of it. You just click on it. So this is the uh, home page it is appearing. And if we, uh, this is the uh, many things I've written. And if you go down, so there will be there a particular dialog box where you can paste your uh, the protein sequence. Okay. Again, I'm telling this protein sequence of from where you are getting, this is the um, uh, predicted primary protein sequence. And if you are not working with the predicted primary protein sequence directly, you can uh, copy it from the NCBI or other protein database, some amino acid sequence, and you can paste over here and you can run this particular uh, server software. Okay, so here um, uh, I have like a size spread, what is mentioned, everything, and I have pasted the protein sequence and just uh, I have selected from here, actually, I forget to take that it. So that is the, uh, it is written, one minute. Uh, it is written like uh, ME, MSAT and SVM prediction. And you can go for uh, all other prediction if you're clicking one after another. And that way, all the result will be appear in front of you. 
So I have clicked on, on both these two size spread 4.0 and the uh, MEM SAT SVM. This MEM SAT SVM stands for membrane helix prediction. If my protein, whether really is having membrane helix domain or not, so that also I can able to predict from here, membrane helix prediction. Uh, so uh, we can uh, paste that we have paste the sequence and we have started and it will take some time this particular part will be rotating uh, it will take some time after analyzing it is going to give you a result this way okay so we need to whatever the result is coming one it is showing the done we have to click on the show size spread uh, once we are clicking on the show size spread so different color related informations we are getting which related to the my protein sequence you can see here different color annotations are there uh, so this different color annotation it is going to tell uh, the click on the show uh, nmct uh, different color annotation it is going to tell below you just look at here the yellow is indicating uh, the stand formations amino acids then uh, even yellow is also indicating the extracellular, the yellow color difference as it is here. Then deep green, re-enter helix. Then pink is indicating helix part. You can see here pink is helix part. And uh, signal peptide, if it is there, it will be very light uh, pink color information. Uh, so basically we are getting here, uh, this is the completely gray color part. I'm getting here, this is the pink color part, deep pink. I'm getting here yellow color part. So the yellow color portions is going to indicate this is the uh, residue which is going to uh, favorable to make the stand or extracellular part also they are going to make the favorable. So and pink color, deep pink color it is indicating this is the helix formation part. So this particular position of the amino acid going to make the helix. So how size spread is working? I, it is working based on the Gold method and the Cho Fosman method. Uh, so they are predicting, they are considering this amino acid, they are trying to find out the uh, propensity values and based on that they are predicting this could be the amino acid from the helix or this could form the coil or etc, etc. Now if you click on the show, if you are clicking on the show MEMSAT, MEM so here uh, the particular positions will be highlighted and that is going to indicate uh, this is the the particular positions are having membrane spanning conditions okay membrane spanning domain it is going to form whatever the amino acid sequence i have provided and they have find out these are the particular portion can responsible for creating the membrane spanning domain hmm? uh, so definitely this is the extracellular part yellow is indicating extracellular part as well as is going to make the stand and the gray it is the membrane interaction so deep gray part whatever is mentioned it is indicating the membrane interaction. That means it is going to, this particular part is going to span the membrane. So that way we am, uh, I'm confirming this is the particular related to the sequence. This is the, that. And second thing, if we again uh, down the scroll, okay, so click on the show type. So already I mentioned uh, the uh, third option is the show types. If you are clicking, again, you are getting some kind of uh, color informations. Uh, so, so some time of color, can you hear me? Hello? Hello? Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Okay, fine. So because um, here and my screen, it has displaced that internet connection, uh, some problem is there. That's why I'm asking. Anyhow, so if you're clicking on the show display, so you are going to get different type of color annotation of the amino acid. So it is going to tell you like uh, whether it is the polar amino acid or it is the hydrophobic amino acid or this is the aromatic amino acid all are uh, predicting with the different different color huh? so a small non-polar part this a c t a s these are all small non-polar part hydrophobic part is the deep green part polar part this is the um, almost uh, light pinkish color it is uh, polar part and aromatic plus cysteine this y this is the uh, sky blue color it is indicating this is the aromatic residues. So you got the idea about the uh, entire amino acid compositions. Also, um, by clicking on the show uh, type, this show A types, okay. And uh, further, further, if you click on the sci-fi cartoon, so below of it, there will be having a plus uh, annotation, okay. Just after writing this part, there will be having a particular just plus symbol. 
so you, that is called the side spread cartoon symbol uh, one will be the plus symbol one will be the minus symbol if you are clicking on the plus symbol you are going to get this kind of picture so this picture is indicating once again this you can see the pink color bar here it is having uh, again some gap again in the pink color etc and below the minus sheet they have mentioned and the prediction they have made so successfully they found yet it is matching this way and this is actually telling that how and which particular portions of this particular sequence exactly going to form the helix going to form the coil etc here c stands for here the annotation will be uh, the meaning of it it will be like that h uh, stands for your helix e stands for beta stand or the beta sheet so wherever the uh, e is written so that will be beta stand or the beta sheet okay so nowhere it is mentioned here and c stands for your coil so c c c whatever is written that is the coil and this way you can again able to understand which particular amino sheet and uh, what is the length of making the uh, what kind of beta stand alpha helix coil etc and again you can click on the MET SVM for transmembrane helix graphics. Okay, so below uh, there will be having another option. So from there you need to click on, and where that plus option is will be given, and this particular word will be written. So you just click on that, and you are going to get this is the uh, membrane uh, domain condi uh, conditions. Okay, so the only this much particular position is indicating it is going to interact with the membrane. That also before also you have seen, and this is the particular conditions. So one part will be outside, then it is crossing the membrane, then again it will be uh, from outside to inside, then from inside to outside it is going, then again the outside domain from outside to inside, again from inside to outside is going, this is the outside domain, and then finally it is coming to the inside again. So this way, uh, this particular uh, scheme is indicating that what particular positions are actually, uh, it is uh, crossing the biological membrane, and that idea also we are getting from here. So uh, this is uh, all about the um, uh, single way, the prediction of the secondary structure. As I mentioned, uh, this is not so much useful for uh, publication purposes. This is just to uh, get the idea. Uh, so this is the composition that this is the things might have or might be going to uh, be there in my uh, protein sequence and biological system, it may work this way. Okay, so this is the uh, secondary structure prediction. I'm coming uh, 5D2 and I tracer after uh, discussion is getting over on the uh, protein uh, modeling. I hope it is clear. So till this much, if you're having doubt, kindly ask me question. Because the next part will be another important part. Uh, that is the protein modeling. Please, if you're, anybody is having any questions or any doubt, kindly ask. Hello. Yeah. JPRED and CIPRED is similar, more or less. JPRED and this is uh, uh, working activity will be just similar. But uh, CIPRED, uh, uh, there uh, more options are there. We can okay. use the more options at a time. Only the difference. Hmm? Uh, we it is working in the similar way. So we are predicting the secondary structure. In the last slide, you have shown that it is working in a bulletin, the graph. Yes, yes. The, that, that graph, they are showing which particular part among that pro entire protein, or uh, which particular domain actually only interacting with the membrane. That means they will be having interaction with the lipid. Then only it can interact with the membrane. This is similar to broad scale analysis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Almost like that. Almost like that. Thank you. So, can I have uh, uh, five to six minute break? Then I can start the protein modeling. Uh, one more. Uh, one more thing is left out. Uh, forget to tell you. So that is uh, how to uh, actually predict that whether your protein is having a transmembrane domain perfectly or not. So how we can predict it. So I already I mentioned in the last slide that uh, there is having some options. It is going to tell you that this could, this is the way uh, to have that kind of uh, domain. So which is going to 
tell you that this is okay it is interacting with the lipid and in the crossing the biological membrane but how exactly we can able to predict the or you can plot the hydropathic uh, plot kind of graph so for that tmh mm server we need to use in to type in the google this word and you need to open this by clicking this tmh mm server v.2.0 so once you are opening this could be the home page okay so this is the home page of it and here you are going to uh, paste your protein sequence in the first format okay and uh, rest of the things let it be by default you need not to change any options and just you need to click on the submit button okay you are clicking on the submit and then immediately within uh, to uh, 20 to 30 seconds you are going to get that tmh tmh mm prediction result so in the result here initially it will be tell it will be telling based on your protein sequence so what are the uh, experimental way what are the possibilities are there that is going to cross the membrane and that is going to form the uh, membrane domain also and uh, here they are going to calculate the particular uh, statistical uh, way okay and statistical value they have given so thmmm 2.0 that outside they found one particular portion of domain is there it is starting from 403 number of amino acid and the helix it is forming between 404 to 4426 this particular uh, positions of amino acid and inside that means in between the membrane okay, we are having two uh, lipid bilayer so in the two lipid bilayer region they will be having 427 to 451 number of amino acid and that result uh, they'll be predicting by this graph uh, so this is the protein actually this particular position is indicating this is the uh, domain forming uh, part and this graph is actually called the uh, hydropathic plot graph so this hydropathic plot graph so here 0 0.8 and below is the zero this zero part is indicating uh, this is the hydrophobic area so this down part is the hydrophobic area so hydrophobic area means uh, always uh, protein the amino acids the hydrophobic part which are uh, actually having phobia with the water so they will try to be present in the core site or the inner site whereas the hydrophilic amino acid always always will be tried to be present to the surface site that means it is going to expose so of course if it is the particular positions of the protein if it is present to the outer membrane part so definitely that positions will be having hydrophobic amino acid uh, sorry hydrophilic amino acid and the uh, inner part that is in between the lipid layer that particular positions whatever the amino acids are there of course that will be the hydrophobic one so by this graph it is going to indicate this is a particular zero this particular baseline that means down part is the your hydrophobic area and the upper part if it is going away from the zero and reaching towards the baseline that is the uh, one is the baseline right, if you are talking so if um, how it is reaching to the baseline that is indicating that is the hydrophilic area so that means this particular part will be outside and rest of this part will be having inside and if we zoom and if you look actually i have taken here uh, for demonstrating like uh, g protein uh, you all of you know the g protein couple receptor is there which can cross the biological membrane seven times so it is the serpentine receptor that's why it is called so same sequence i have taken and if you look at this particular uh, bar if we count by zooming it you can see the seven uh, lines it is present here so that seven line is indicating this is the your uh, seven time it is going to cross the membrane uh, similar uh, better way you can predict this result if you are using the tm spread okay so you are writing on the google tm pred and if you are clicking on the tm pred server and you are getting the home page and you are pasting the sequence and just run nothing is there just you need to paste the sequence uh, in the normal way no need to give the first format and you just run once you are clicking on the run options you are going to get this is the result okay this is the result you are going to get so here they are mentioning that which amino acid to which amino acid it is having the helix formations um, uh, that uh, tendency 
and exactly where the helix is formed because uh, normal idea we are having especially with the gene protein coupled receptor that uh, helix form they are making when they are spanning the biological membrane so how, in that what could be the length of the helix how many amino acid to be present in between uh, that particular helix area all uh, it is going to uh, predict from here and finally what we are looking for we are looking for this particular graph okay this top part this peak part is indicating this is the outside region and rest all this part is indicating this is the your hydrophobic region of the protein and that's why they are, this is going to be present in the membrane part only the uh, maximum highest peak this particular area it is uh, going to tell you it is present to the outer side so how many uh, peaks you are getting one two three four five six and if you consider uh, this is uh, starting if you're leaving this part also because from zero it is going to start for prediction so we can tell this is one two three four five again this part is not able to reach uh, or this is not able to cross or it is very uh, away from the minus thousand this particular score so we cannot uh, consider exactly this particular part and this is indicating this is the going to stop okay so in between how many peaks we are getting that is one two three four and five and we can tell this is the six and this is the seven so the seven peaks are indicating from the starting to end point the seven peaks are indicating this is the seven time it is spanning the biological membrane so we are, all this aspect is to be written here where exactly the spanning will start from which amino acid uh, again from membrane to towards the outside phase the spanning will arise so all those aspect will be written here and below we are going to get this is the proper hydropathic plot graph so this is the another important aspect uh, with your primary structure of the protein uh, before uh, you are going to uh, completely analyzing that what could be the, its 3d structure and how it is going to uh, use in the biological system because if you found that your protein is having this is the tendency that means it could be uh, behave as a receptor protein most probably that's why uh, it is going to be present in the a biological membrane that means once that drug you are targeting so it will be very easy for you to understand that you the lipid uh, in the biological layer these proteins are already present you know the sequence of the protein you know the structure of the protein so the targeting will be easy for you that's why i am telling uh, step by step this is the important things you better you got the idea you keep in your mind and then you can go for the protein modeling and drug design i hope it is clear so next aspect uh, what exactly i am going to talk to you that is a protein modeling and this protein modeling uh, is very very crucial area in the uh, drug designing aspect otherwise uh, for protein protein docking aspect and also how you know the immune system is working perfectly and our immune immunoglobulins are uh, very much um, high molecular weight of proteins and these proteins are interacting with the various kind of antigen even all kind of process in the biological system it is depending on the interactions how the small molecules are interacting with the larger molecule how the two larger molecules are interacting with each other all is the major theme for uh, continuing the physiological activity in the living system okay so in that uh, one of the aspect is the protein modeling so if you wanted to understand all those aspect proper way in uh, whatever the protein uh, you are getting the protein why it is behaving in that way uh, if you really wanted to know you can go through step by step ultimately you can model the protein and you can able to understand what could be the core part of the protein and all uh, and that way you can uh, uh, use it will be useful for pharmacological aspect so i'm going to talk about the protein modeling uh, so the protein structure prediction and the tertiary structure and the functional structure basically we can found with the modeling aspect we are not talking only on the secondary structure secondary structure is the got over we need to know what kind of secondary structure it could uh, it is going to form and what kind of where exactly helix and c ton etc will be there then we are moving to the higher order of structure that is uh, tertiary tertiary quaternary as well as those are considered as the functional aspecting structure of the protein we are going to detect the functional aspect of the protein 
so uh, this protein modeling is a very uh, prime goal nowadays for all uh, researcher and especially uh, in the pharmacological field uh, so how to design the drug and how to interact the drug and protein modeling uh, it is completely as a, one of the aspect is the on the drug designing and second aspect is that to know the function of the protein interaction of the protein intern uh, in antigenic behavior of certain, certain kind of molecules even immunoglobulin how it is working on that antigen so for knowing all these we require the protein modeling concept and also it is useful for rational design of the protein with the increased stability of the novel function so by genetic engineering aspect we are uh, nowadays we are taking some gene from somebody else we are putting to someone and we are expecting that protein is going to uh, pro uh, produce in the so and so uh, organism and in that organism whether uh, it is going to fold the protein perfectly or not and what kind of uh, post translational modification that protein is required so all those aspect we are keeping in our mind and we are doing those particular genetic engineering approach but uh, the most of the cases uh, if you are not able to select the uh, perfect uh, your um, uh, host system on uh, in which you are going to express your protein uh, so your experiment will be completely super flop because uh, in a eukaryotic system uh, that is having a lot of uh, kind of uh, translational modification glycosylation then folding and many many things are there uh, so uh, uh, if you are using uh, that eukaryotic protein to be expressed in the prokaryotic system maximum time it is not possible or if the eukaryotic uh, prokaryotic system you can able to express in the eukaryotic system after bit modification it is possible but my point so you need to understand why it is not possible why it is possible so that context also protein modeling and the features of the protein how it is working you need to understand proper way and most of the cases for doing this uh, protein related study we can get the protein structure from the pdb and in the pdb basically the structure whatever will be present those are either to be solved by nmr otherwise extra crystallography and most of the time that uh, the protein whatever you are looking for it may not be there a similar kind of protein it is there but exactly that protein only it is not there so in that case what we will do if you know the protein modeling uh, aspect so you can model your protein and you can use that protein uh, better way uh, and another important uh, drawback to use the pdb so when uh, they are um, uh, when the nmr or the extra crystallographic method uh, those uh, chemistry people are using to uh, solving the structure of the protein uh, so maximum time um, uh, because of machine fault uh, so a lot of water molecules of course to be involved in that process and water will be co crystal along with that protein molecules and if you do not know how to remove the water and uh, exactly how to get the protein structure directly after downloading that protein if you are doing the docking it will be mesmerized okay your your result will be the faulty result this is uh, another problem and uh, another uh, other problem is uh, most of the cases the protein will be uh, your uh, uh, entire structure is not able to resolve okay partial part of the structure will be resolved and if you do not know if you are taking those particular structure only for docking and for your purpose so definitely the result whatever is going to get that is not going to accept it by anybody so a lot of lot of uh, aspect is there uh, so how to select the protein and how to use that protein for drug designing purposes uh, so for all aspect better way you need to understand what is called exactly modeling of the protein and how you can create your own model and how uh, what are the drawbacks basically is there in the uh, pdb those structure how to refine those how to uh, that all the unsolved part how you are going to solve and that way you are going to make the perfect and concrete structure of the modeling protein so for doing this modeling there are having three different methods uh, whatever the uh, server or um, free web based server we are using so uh, one of the server is using like uh, homology modeling and some of them are using the threading and some of them are using the ab initiation based approach so based uh, method is the homology modeling and ab, ab initiation based prediction 
okay so we what we used to do we used to do uh, first homology modeling with the same protein or same protein sequence the result whatever you are getting we are keeping in our mind or we are saving it and the same sequence we are going for using the ab initiation based prediction and you need to tally both the result and then only you can use or you can uh, select your actual uh, model of protein and after uh, creating the model you need to um, uh, validate your model and you need to refine your model this is the two other concept is there uh, so valid model is whatever the protein structure you got uh, by looking the ramachandran plot uh, you can validate your structure and when you do the ramachandran plot maximum cases we can see that when we are downloading the protein from uh, pdb and if you are using the ramachandran plot so maximum cases we can see the uh, many uh, unfavorable region where uh, some unfavorable amino acids are present that means those protein never ever able to use directly for your docking study you need to refine the protein in that case you can download it but you need to refine that that the refinement option is there so you have to refine that protein whatever the un uh, means uh, favorable region whatever the unfavorable amino acids are there uh, so you need to remove that and that way you need to standardize the score standardize your protein and then only you can able to use it so only now modeling a uh, first step for doing all those you need to uh, create your better model you need to validate your model and that model you can use for further study so maximum as i mentioned homology modeling they are using and second one is the ab initiation based prediction we are using so in the homology modeling basically uh, here it is going to work finally uh, based on the atomic model level we are creating the atomic model based on the experimentally determinant structure that is closely related to the sequence level so whatever the experimentally determinant structure already there in the database uh, that structure and that structure related sequence we are taking and our sequence we are comparing with that if it is matching and uh, then we are predicting that database that uh, solve structure whatever is there my sequence also will be having similar kind of structure and the function so that's the concept of homology modeling and second one is the threading uh, identification or the threading process here uh, basically uh, the structure is similar what kind of proteins are there in the database uh, that is having with or without uh, detectable similar uh, similarities we are taking them that means sequence wise similarity may not be there my sequence whatever uh, i am providing uh, to get the actual model structure uh, so when this particular thread uh, process is working so they are looking just to the 3d structure of the protein whatever present in the database and my sequence what kind of 3d structure is going to produce the 3d versus 3d they are comparing whether the protein is having similar kind of uh, structure um, uh, similar type of sequence or not they are, we are here that particular aspect is not going to consider that's why i mentioned the uh, threading identification some particular cases it is required but maximum time homology modeling and ab initiation based approach we can prefer an ab initiation based approach basically homology modeling and threading both kind of uh, activity uh, it is they are considering and also they are considering the physical chemical properties of the protein and what kind of tendencies are there those amino acid to be fold in perfect way so all those aspects you are considering and that's why that ab initiation approach is 100% reliable and homology modeling if it is 90% 90% reliable ab initiation based approach is 100% reliable because ab initiation based approach it is completely on depending on homology modeling thread mo thread identification at the same time extra advantage or weightage they are giving on the uh, physical chemical properties of the amino acid okay so uh, these are the uh, three process or we can see algorithm to be used for predicting the structure of the 3d structure of the protein and modeling so homology modeling as i already mentioned so it is going to compare with the uh, sequence to sequence and in the solve sequence what kind of uh, structure or uh, if it is found the matching with the sequence so that sequence is going to use as a template and based on the template the model is going to be built so the principle behind it here if the two proteins share a high enough sequence similarity so high enough sequence similarity here minimum cutoff uh, similarity should be uh, 60% 
Okay, so below 60%, if we found the similarity, we are not going to accept here. So minimum 60% uh, cutoff we are keeping. So 60% uh, value or 60% if it is matching between the two protein sequence. Uh, so we are predicting this proteins must have the similar three-dimensional structure. And if one of the protein sequence have a known structure, then the sequence against whom I wanted to predict my structure, uh, by looking the known predicted structure, I am confirming that my sequence also having so and so structure. Got it? So this is the main principle behind the homology modeling. And here in this homology modeling, all uh, our atom model based on the alignment with the template proteins we are considering. Uh, so all various type of model to be generate and which model is the best based on this particular 60% uh, cutoff value, so whatever I mentioned based on that similarity wise, which one is the best, the best one to be selected. And that is also having a lot of uh, statistical approach. And by looking those approach, we are considering, okay, somehow this protein is to be used as a my uh, template and we can make this kind of structure. So what uh, steps basically we follow here. So first step for homology modeling, you need to select the template. Got it. So until unless you are correct, you are able to select the proper template. You may not able to continue with the further step. If the template selection uh, it is wrong, so the structure whatever you are detecting it will be completely wrong. Fine. So template selection is the prime important criteria here, and it involves the identification of the homologous sequence in the protein structure and the database that particular sequences will be there, and it is going to match with them and. And by looking certain criteria, we can select those temple, uh, template. Second approach, once you are able to select the template, uh, so second uh, step or the second approach will be alignment of the target and the template sequence. Both the sequence, uh, our query sequence and the template sequence will be uh, compared. And third approach will be after comparing, by looking the similarity, you can build a framework of structure. And after building a framework of a structure, you can Add, add additional optimization condition like the side chain uh, prediction, then looping model, uh, the looping prediction, all those things. Um, uh, uh, everything we are uh, considering here. Fine. Uh, so my my screen is visible. Hello. Yes, yes, visible. Oh, fine. Uh, yes, sir. Fine. Uh, because sometimes it is uh, appearing in my uh, screen that a screen may not visible by the um, audience. Anyway, uh, so uh, building a framework structure is important. And once you are building a framework structure, then uh, further other optimization condition like looping, uh, it is proper happening or not. All this also we are uh, taking care. And then after refining everything, we are considering actual model. And of course, after defining, we are evaluating it proper way and then we are considering the model. So this is the picture. So the sequence only we are providing the target sequence. So with the database, it is going to search and then identification of the template and based on the template and my sequence, again, they're aligning. And that's what it is called the refinement of the sequence alignment. Based on the alignment, uh, this refining, they found somewhere some gaps are created in this uh, particular uh, structure. Uh, so now the concept will be to fill up those gap. Uh, so for that, this particular threading condition is important and looping condition is important. So that now they are telling and by looking this loop and thread, they are filling all this gap. And finally, the model structure, whatever they're preparing, that will be having kind of evaluation strategy. So this evaluation strategy is the statistical parameter. So the statistical parameter is telling this model yes, perfectly, it has optimized. So now we can select this model for our study. So this is the activity step by step, we need to continue. And some of the thing definitely uh, the software will be taken care. And you need to understand that uh, how to evaluate the model. What are the model they are presenting, uh, the, how to evaluate it. And major important things, how to select your template. So template selection from the PDB, the practical approach directly will be coming instead of uh, uh, talking too much. So uh, backbone modeling is important. Backbone modeling means uh, you, uh, you, uh, what kind of amino acid should be uh, hydrophobic and hydrophilic based on that, the backbone will be created of the protein. 
and this backbone creating is the uh, prime important to uh, preparing the model and once we get the backbone we can understand that what kind of loop i suppose to uh, refine and what kind of loop i need to after defining to join with my protein structure uh, so we need to get off that so loop modeling is a loop modeling it is telling uh, so i can come directly suppose um, uh, this initially we have able to compare only this part and this part but this loop part this particular part is completely missing because we have seen here once these two sequences we are aligning uh, so definitely here some gaps are created okay so now how to fill this gap for that we need to go for the loop uh, filling or the uh, loop alignment the, whatever the process we can tell or we also we can tell sometime that is the loop modeling activity okay so we need to uh, move for the loop modeling activity so this loop modeling activity uh, we can tell one way this is also a mini protein modeling process Hmm. So, entire thing is the protein modeling, but the finding the loop itself also considered as the uh, mini uh, protein modeling process. So, why I am telling this is the mini protein modeling process? Because uh, in the loop modeling, once we are going for uh, looking the protein structure in the sequence alignment, there will be having certain uh, insertion and the deletions of the uh, protein sequence. Therefore, there will be creating the gap. So, how to fill, it, fill that gap for that? We, need, we are having some kind of library okay that is called the rotama library so in the rotama library with respect to the various kind of amino acid composition what kind of this fold is possible so that related information is there that is called the rotama library so my this protein as i mentioned this particular part i am having but only this part is missing so we need to look for the rotama library and we need to see what kind of uh, this particular uh, loop is possible to fit here we need to go by looking the n number of uh, loop conditions which is present in the rotama library from there and each well from this library each loop when you are when the server or database or this particular software will be joining after joining every time they will be considering phi and psi angle of the ramachandran plot but my point so uh, this Ramachandran plot, once it is favoring this particular loop, one particular loop model, which is there in the uh, Rotama library, if it is uh, after taking it here, if the Ramachandran plot, if it is uh, favoring, yes, or it is telling, yes, this loop is possible to fit here. So that way we are taking that loop, we are putting it here and we are filling all the gaps. So wherever the gaps will be created, definitely need to understand there will be having some kind of loop. So that loop is going to uh, take from the different type of Rotamar library and ultimately phi and psi angle of the Ramachandran plot will be varied and that way we can fill up the entire structure of the protein. And after that, another things you need to consider where software is doing that is the side chain refinement. So what is the side chain refinement? Definitely uh, when we are doing the proper uh, protein modeling only our concentrations will be there to get the 3d structure in the core whatever is there uh, only we can uh, give the emphasis on that but until unless we are doing the side refinement your structure will be not up to the mark so side chain refinement it is basically telling so surface uh, in the uh, when the database is compiling the structure that time any hydrophobic residues by chance if it is appearing to the surface area so uh, that hydrophobic residues is actually giving the faulting result. That's why again the full uh, side refinement is telling if the hydrophobic residues sometimes uh, so by chance if it is appearing there, what could be the alternative residues to be present there so that hydrophobic residues to be omitted and hydrophilic residues to be present to the surface area. So that activity also it is going to check. Uh, so that is called the side chain refinement and every step ramachandran plot is going to tell whether this is the correct one or this is not correct one so side chain refinement also it is important the criteria you need to understand when you are doing the protein modeling and last the modeling refinement so modeling refinement complete will be based on the energy function so the protein you know the biological system when the protein is making and protein can go for folding and that way after folding and twisting, they can make the complete, uh, perfect uh, functional structure. 
and for happening the folding and the twisting lot of lot of energy concept is there so this energy concept wise my protein whatever the software has prepared whether it is going to fulfill the biological energy concept or not that is the meaning of model refinement in terms of the energy uh, so energy always should be minimum and minimum energy containing the structure always to be fruitful and the favorable in the biological system uh, that's why the energy refinement process finally will be conducted and the energy related information also when we are doing the homology model that also is going to predict uh, that is also going to show and by looking at everything we are considering okay chalo this is the perfect so but this is having different kind of software is there i'll be coming here and model evaluation again after doing the energy cal calculation energy wise stability whether it is there all those things again the software will be finally checking the model evolution so model evolution again it will be depending on uh, ramachandran plot with the phi and psi angle all the residues are perfectly placed in the uh, same uh, exact positions or not uh, so ultimately we are going to get the protein structure and now pro problem is once we are doing it uh, so sometimes for providing the actual model uh, some unfavorable amino acid need to be plotted in the some area Uh, so before using your this model for further study again you need to um, refine your model so that process also it is there so manually you need to remove that uh, whatever the unfavorable region amino acids are there a maximum time glycine and the proline will be falling to the different unfavorable region uh, so the glycine and the proline need to remove you need to place in the proper area again you need to calculate the energy that manually you need to do and finally uh, the structure whatever will be getting that will be 100% evaluated and perfect model we can use that model for our other work so this is the activity which is the energy concept which has mentioned so every step that atomic energy how it is favoring uh, so that is going to check and there will be a threshold level once it is crossing the threshold level that particular protein is not going to stable so always it is try to be below the threshold level and it will be starting to the minus and it will be crossing the zero and the threshold uh, will be a bit high like 5 or 10 angstra energical value it if is keep, uh, uh, keeping the threshold for the software we are not allowing to touch the threshold if the portion of the amino acid or the portion of the protein if it is touching to the threshold that particular part immediately need to refine okay so ramachandran plot will be working based on this particular graph so if the particular part sometimes if it is crossing as i mentioned glycine and proline maximum the folding portions of the protein we can get so if somehow it is present and crossing to the threshold the so that glycine and the proline we need to rectify and if you look at the stability uh, so the stability will be indicating this way so suppose uh, the threshold if it is crossing and uh, this between the threshold how better way it can uh, go uh, uh, in the biological system that also we need to be predicted here threshold is indicating the protein whether it would be perfect or not then again second level of uh, energical calculation is important so here the second level energical calculation uh, from this particular uh, 0.5 whatever is written from here to till this threshold whatever the folding conditions we are getting here the statistical uh, parameter the statistical inter uh, inference is important by looking the statistical value especially the jet the jet score or the jet statistics or the uh, c statistics or the c score will be performed here and if we found this amino acids are not suitable then this particular portions whatever the uh, protein part is there that should be cut off and rest of the part will be joined that means these are the particular part software is throwing out and in such case we can get in faulty and a very small protein structure so many many aspects are there this is software is going to work out and just uh, opening the software putting your protein and you are uh, looking the model it is not going to work out you need to know the logic you need to know the theory everything in better way and so uh, second aspect that is the threading and the fold recognition so here uh, uh, it is working this way so these are only the small number of the protein fold available that is less than uh, 1000 or more than or less than that also the protein fold is available so here what actually doing in the threading process i mentioned so uh, uh, side to side it is going to compare 
uh, so here the rotamal library concept just before i mentioned the rotamal library concept there are almost a thousand or uh, less than thousand number of fold kind of um, uh, structure is present so taking the fold and try to gap or try to seal that particular ungap portions and that is the meaning of threading and the fold recognition and uh, uh, here this again the energetical concept will be continue suppose this is the sequence i have provided so initially they are making software is making such kind of uh, structure now by looking the structure wherever the fold is there whether this fold is perfectly happening or not for that each fold will be compared with the database or what are the rotamar library i mentioned with that whatever the uh, amino acid related fold are there it will be compared and finally if they found this particular fold and that fold is matching then they are considering yes the fold whatever predicted it is the correct one so like that n number of fold will be joined and n number of predetermined structure will be created and every cases again the energy will be optimized and finally based on the energy optimization energy calculation there will be a scoring and the scoring is going to uh, tell you which particular model is the best one so definitely in the table as per the energy value lowest energy value which particular protein model will be there so that could be your best protein model and that is going to be used for further so this is the looping and threading process is working this way and uh, last method uh, that is uh, called the ab initiation based method and uh, here in the looping and threading model uh, so they are using the side blast approach and the scope family uh, that calculation they are creating and finally they are going to understand what is the actual fold to be present in the protein uh, so the uh, last approach is the ab initiation based approach so this is the most workable one as i mentioned two different approaches will be there here and this is the uh, by closing your eyes of course you can able to use this ab initiation based method so here the homology fold and further the proteins amino acids that all physical chemical values or properties they are keeping in mind and finally they are creating the structure so ab initiation based structure homology model whatever the model you are building i repeat beginning so uh, that same sequence you need to use for ab initiation based pro process and you need to check whether both the cases you are getting almost similar type of result or not and here the both the cases whatever the protein um, uh, structure you are downloading so you need to use the different type of software um, uh, protein viewers softwares and you need to project one protein over another and try to get the rmst value and if the rmst value lower than one that means both the protein is almost perfect and uh, that way you need to tally whether both the, the proteins are uh, actually uh, useful or both the server both the process whether given similar type of result or not so i am going to tell you first uh, here fiery so this is the uh, very very good uh, software which is completely based on uh, actually ab initiation based okay and here though it is based on ab initiation based but first it is doing the homology modeling and whatever the uh, steps i mentioned homology first finding the template then step by step energy evaluation and it is predicting the result so phyire.25 so you can open uh, the you can type it 52 and you can open the home page and here you can uh, first you can provide your email address so that result uh, may come to your email also because it will take some time and job of description if you wanted to give you can give otherwise you can leave it you can provide the amino acid sequence here so first format is not mandatory you provide your sequence here and ultimately all those will be uh, optional okay that means it will be let it be default and you just click on the file search once you're clicking on the file research, you can look at here. I've pasted everything and I've taken the insulin uh, gene sequence. And um, uh, I want to know that insulin, uh, this particular sequence, what kind of um, uh, structure it is going to make. So cl uh, click on the file research and you need to wait. So once it is, yes. So one, it is uh, working, uh, it will show this kind of result. Result is progressing, you need to wait for some time. So if you look at keep on your monitor, you can see one by one how the steps are progressing. So first they are finding the uh, homologous with the side blast, 
and then second they'll be showing that the building uh, hidden markup model they are using and and this particular bar slowly slowly it will be moving one uh, one one step it is going to over and finally it will be reaching to this particular end and then only you can get the result so it may take sometimes one and a half hours uh, even one hour two hours three hours even sometimes if the sequence if it is too many uh, then uh, means lengthy sequence if you are using it may take also one day time so one by one the step will be uh, working third step it is telling uh, to checking the transmembrane helix whether the protein is present or not and fourth step it is telling to finding the um, your uh, to fourth step it is basically telling to tape the uh, loop detection fifth step it is the loop modeling and the sixth step it is telling generating the result page okay so you can see the line has already reached to the end so it is generating the result page and after that within uh, one minute or within few seconds the mail will come otherwise in the home page itself you can get the result uh, so uh, this is the result page so this is the first uh, result and the first protein structure they have predicted as i mentioned and you can see here right hand side it is mentioned pdb header from uh, and the uh, the pdb molecules what is that i have provided insulin and here 99.9 percent confidence that is a uh, uh, confidence level up to predicting the protein structure is 99.9 and coverage area is 46 percent so one step i mentioned the query coverage so similarity to be found uh, tied to finding out between the two sequence the uh, uh, minimum 40 to 50 percent should be there okay so here they have created the 40 to 60 percent but that they can found the confidence level is quite high so according to them this is the first model so you can rotate your model and you can look at here and below all other um, almost 100 models will be they will be providing so if you scroll down and if you look at the confidence level and percentage of identity uh, that uh, both the things you should look at here and with all the proteins which put particular databases which protein they have compares everything it will be mentioned to the right hand side so here two things you need to remember not only the confidence your percentage of query is the prime important one so you can look at here it is the 60 it is written then if you scroll down 47 45 like it is slowly slowly coming down so if you go below it may give the 10 per 10 percent or 12 percent result also so you need not to consider in not those particular result always you need to consider the uh, percentage of query that could be the first important parameter and then the confidence okay so both the things you need to look, look at here and you can download your protein structure fine right? so this way the below you can look at here the number it is coming down percentage and uh, completely at the end of the page so you can uh, there will be option you can able to download so all the structure you can able to download so that particular option will be here so generate the uh, superposition of the selected model so you can click if you feel you can click over there so they are going to get the general superposition model so how this loop they have generated so different loop one after another they have put it and they try to find out the rmsd value okay so this rmsd value uh, it is showing all cases zero that means there is no deviation but the tm score it is showing one so TM score is the again the one kind of statistical parameter. I'll be talking about the TM score on the ab initiation based method. So you can look at here if you wanted to tally with which particular chain with whom they have uh, compare and how they have compare everything. You can look at here and you can download all the structure in the uh, PDB form and you can use for your research purpose. So this is very much useful. And second one, SS spread. Uh, this is not so much useful, but still I have. Uh, I'm trying to show you here. So SS spread. If you open, you just paste the sequence in the first format, and you can run. So here also they are predicting this A stands for uh, which alpha helix, and then if you are getting the B, the B stands for is the beta pleated sheet. So like that, they will be predicting and they'll be projecting this is i'm repeating this is not so much useful but fiery 2 is uh, very very much useful to detecting the protein structure and you have seen that whatever the points are mentioned regarding to modeling the protein all the points it is validating in every step and then it is proceeding for the second stage uh i'll be coming to the uh, eye tracer model right now so eye tracer it is uh, basically uh, your uh, 
uh, ab initiation based method so i uh, if it, for logging it uh, you need to have your uh, institution and mail id where dot uh, com this should not be there okay because it will be dot com ind indicates this is the private mail so you cannot use that private mail id if you are providing here you are not going to get any kind of um, usable password for this particular server so i sir i am having that uh, so I, I am using it so i sir you need to type you need to open i need to click on you need to get the home page here you just uh, paste your protein sequence in the first format and below uh, that will be options so you can look at here so uh, this institutional mail id only need to give and then uh, they'll be mailing you the password in this institutional mail id so you can by using the password only you can able to access it other than you may not able to use it so uh, i'm i'm doing all those things and i'm kicking for starting the it sir so initial uh, result will be coming this way so uh, they'll be waiting uh, so this is the uh, first part so once i am submitting it they're telling these are the sequence i have submitted and i need to wanted to know uh, the modeling part of this particular sequence uh, so the result when it will be coming uh, so result will be appearing this way basically that uh, institutional mail id whatever you have provided they are in the hyperlink that the result will be given so you need to click on the hyperlink you are going to get this is the page it is a result job page uh, so initially uh, what protein sequence i have provided that is mentioned here and then uh, they have mentioned here the, the predicted secondary structure so where is the h stands for helix c stands for coil so they have mentioned here and then uh, predicted solvent accessibility because uh, protein um, in the biological system always it will be present in a certain kind of solvent especially in the water right so what is the solvent accessibility means uh, in this protein how uh, what are the hydrophobic amino acids are there basically uh, that is going to find out so that is the uh, solvent accessibility and then uh, normalized beta factor so this beta factor it is indicating again the x-ray crystallography or the nmr if you are doing so they are in the pdb already we have used the pdb how to access so there the b factor is one kind of a uh, factor we are also considering when you are selecting the protein structure so here uh, this protein if we are solving uh, by nmr or the x-ray crystallography the structure so the database with respect to the sequence what kind of b factors are available uh, with that they have compared and they found uh, it is matching with the insulin structure and that's why they have provided this b factor related result and you can the b factor in the sense you can see here wherever the helix it is there it is showing the dot with the helix and that way the b factor is the uh, important to understand the uh, structure of the protein and then um, uh, if you further scroll down it will be showing the result like whom it have uh, compared and what is the uh, uh, that heat score everything it will be given so if you click on the download the respective uh, model will be downloaded and with the respective download also it is given so along with your protein and those uh, uh, database protein where exactly they have found the match and based on that initially they have predicted here should be coil here should be helix again for, uh, further if you go down there will be having five best model presentation so here one two three if you scroll uh, go to the right hand side i can get another two fold so five different models are given and this model uh, of course the uh, first one will be the best one but as i'm telling first one is the best one don't believe on that uh, so for that if you understand that this first one is the best one you need to go through these are the parameter whatever is mentioned and if you click on the screen you just click on that all the model will start rotating okay uh, so you need to look at here yeah, whether the first model is the best one and if you wanted to download it so you can click on the download model automatically it will be downloaded and the first model it is uh, it will be appearing here then second model third model it will be coming like that so uh, under the first model whatever the data is written in the second model third model similar type of information will be provided so here it is given the c score and the value is minus 3.92 and then estimated tm score it is given 0 0.29 plus minus 0 0.09 and estimated rmsd value 14.5 plus minus 3.7 and storm so by looking the c score yeah, and by uh, looking the decoyed value okay i repeat the decoyed conditions we need to predict which is the best 
uh, model from here. What it? So how, if you wanted to know what is the C score, here read more about the C score, this option is there. If you are clicking, you will get the idea how they have performed these statistics. So here, uh, if you look at the C score, the C score is basically a Z score confidence result it is telling. Okay, Z parameters, parametric statistics, it will be following. Uh, it is indicating the confidence score for estimating the quality of the uh, predicted model and the range of the C score is minus five to plus two. So if you look at this value, um, it is given minus 3.92. That means it is good. And if it is go to the, uh, for the second uh, model, it is giving minus 4.04, then minus 4.18. That means it, the value is increasing, got it? So value is increasing means it is going to uh, cross the minus five, right? So you need to look at the C score and also the RMSD value also need to look. And the TM score, what is mentioned here, TM score, so 0 0.29. So TM score is indicating the top, uh, indicate the topology of the model basically. And the TM score, if it is greater than 0 0.5, that is going to indicate the model is having correct topology. And if it is less than 0 0.17, the model is indicating this is having random similarity uh, topology. That means where with the database randomly, it has found the match. Uh, that's why the score is coming and perfectly if it is able to calculate if it is finding the match uh, topologically the score should be greater than 0 0.5 so here what is the score uh, here tm score is 0 0.29 right so 0 0.29 means uh, it is greater than uh, 0 0.29 greater than 0 0.5 okay so that score is much better and you can select the first model and second, another important things, uh, this TM score also uh, indicating the cluster density concept. The so cluster density, it is required for uh, your uh, study the dynamicity and study the simulation process. So it is telling that um, uh, it is in terms of the structured decoys. Uh, basically, these models are validated here. So the structured decoys, it is telling in a limited space, of the uh, biological system, how the protein will be able to fit themselves. And uh, what could be the quantity of the protein to be fit over there? That is indicating by the cluster density or the uh, structural decoy. So higher is the cluster density means the structure occurs more in simulation trajectory. Therefore, we can select that model better way. Higher is the cluster density, better is the confidence of confirmation. So we need to look at the uh, these uh, decoy value for with respect to all and you need to look at the RMSG value, TM score and also the uh, C score which is indicating the Z parametric statistics. So based on that, we can select the respective model and you can of course download it. Uh, so here uh, this required value, everything is the description is given. Uh, so if you able to click in this read more about C score, uh, this particular page will open, you can study better way from there. And uh, with what are the database with whom they have uh, compared? So, and where this loop has compared and uh, with where the actual alpha helix to helix have compared. So all informations will be provided here. So PDB hit TM score, along with the RMSD value, everything is given. And further, if you go below, uh, if your protein uh, is having enzyme, uh, enzymatic nature, so what could be the, uh, as per the enzyme commission, what could be the nomenclature of it that also they sometimes provide. Uh, so this way you can able to download and where it would be the exactly the uh, your ligand binding site of it that also it is below if you go down. Uh, so for that, that also you can able to understand. So here this is indicating the ligand and the ligand is binding here how they have predicted by uh, checking these are the different uh, protein ID from the feed the PDB. Uh, they have cross checked and they found uh, these are having the ligand binding site in the similar way. So they have mentioned here, this is the ligand binding site. And uh, again, below further, so we can get with whom they have calculated everything. So detailed statistics will be provided here. So this is the uh, IK, sir. So here you just uh, look at uh, in all the cases, just you are providing the sequence, nothing else you are doing. Well, if you know the protein sequence, what you're supposed to take, Directly, you are pasting the protein sequence both in case of the 5E2 as well as the ITHR, and you are getting the model structure. But 
how actually you are you have you, you are going to select your sequence so that i am going to tell at last okay so first you need to this at last what i am telling first you need to perform this experiment then the same sequence you need to go for 5d2 as well as the iteration because only you are testing the sequence you are not going to do anything but uh, actual modeling is depending on how you are getting the proper um, uh, template how you are selecting the template what basis you are selecting the template and how we can define the, the template and actual model so if you are able to understand then only entire uh, process will be successful okay so i am telling here the swiss model how we can able to use so i hope this also you have performed in your practical session uh, so here uh, i have taken this is the cys tyrosine kinase this particular protein uh, sequence and it's sh2 domain only I have used okay so not the entire protein structure sh2 domain I have used and this is the id for it and this is the sequence of it so i have opened first the blast p because protein i need to do the protein blast i've opened I have pasted my sequence there and after pasting you have to be very careful to selecting the database you need to click over here you need to select the only the protein data bank that pdb database you should not select all other kind of database then it will be mesmerized so you need to selecting it the respective database and then you are going for uh, uh, blast now after blast you are going to get such kind of alignment right in this alignment many things you need to take care what are these many things so first thing is the e value of course second thing is the query coverage got it so these two parameters are very important and vital uh, to selecting your special uh, pro uh, protein as a model but my point so here uh, you are getting uh, the two score so i have taken the human actually uh, this uis tyrosine kinase this particular protein sh2 domain now once i have done that uh, blast so i got these are the result and here i can see if i i, I just zoom it here i can see they're given with the galas they're given with the homo sapiens and galas homo sapiens like that many things they have given so now uh, for uh, selecting as a template for continuing your further work which one or which particular protein is supposed to select i have taken the human one so uh, whether i should go for the this galas or whether i should go for the uh, homo sapiens itself so there will be a confusion but according to the score both of them are having near about 89 point something score and the e value also is almost seven uh, same and query coverage also it is showing the 100 percent now, which one is supposed to select? This is a big question. You need to understand here how to select actual your protein. So for that, uh, uh, you need to uh, go for the uh, protein PDB. Okay, you are opening uh, the uh, PDB protein site, and you need to remember these are the three uh, U4W and four MXO. These are indicating uh, these are the PDB ID because i have selected the protein data bank blast so this pdb id whatever is given so you just note it down and you can open the pdb and you just go through the both the structure and also you can download both the structure that is the 3u4w and 4mxo from the pdb next after downloading it what you need to do so here are the structure we have downloaded next after downloading it is very vital uh, to check both the structure properly and for that you require the visualizer system either uh, you can use the ucsf chimera i prefer to use otherwise you can use the uh, your um, what is called pymol there also you can use and uh, but if you are using the pymol in such case what difficulties you are going to get that also i am telling here so this is ucsf chimera the home page i am opening and i am uploading my uh, the first protein sequence okay so first protein sequence it is uh, what uh, which protein i have the two protein i mentioned like so 4uw and 3 3u4w and 4mxo so one by one i am putting this particular protein so for first i have taken as for my uh, pdb result 
okay as per uh, not pdb result at, as per my last result so first pu 4w i am uploading then 4mxo i am uploading got it so the first protein once i have uploaded and uh, this kind of structure i am getting now if i'm zoom this structure can you look at here the different dotted line mentioned here dotted line is there here also some dotted line is there i i am not finding this kind of dotted line anywhere of this particular structure so this dotted line what does it indicate the dotted lines are indicate these are the missing residues when the nmr or xr whatever the x-ray crystallography whatever the method uh, this protein structure have solved they are not able to solve it completely that means i am having some kind of unresolved residues in this protein structure first point now second protein also you are uploading here got it this is the second protein this is the first protein this proteins are having a lot of a dotted structure whereas when i inspect this protein i did not found this proteins are having such kind of dotted line structure got it that means this proteins have been solved perfect way 100% uh solve uh, uh, happen with this protein but not with this protein second what i'll do i need to merge this protein one with over other to calculate the rmhd value and to check whether both the proteins are structurally uh, similar or not so for that the options whatever is given and i have just uh, uploaded one protein over other so i have selected uh, 4m xo it is going to um, uh, move over the 3u4w and this way i got this uh, blue is indicating one protein and uh, this is another protein it is projecting over after another and immediately below i am getting the rmhd value i have noted down the rmhd value here 0.651 which is less than minus 1 okay so that means this is uh, perfectly it is uh, projecting one after another so by doing that you are getting confirmation this uh, second protein what i have taken the second protein does not have any kind of missing residues and that's why the second protein if you are selecting for continuing your further work you are going to get the best result so this taking is very very ne much necessary very much necessary simply uh, blindly if you are downloading protein and i am doing something it is not going to work out with the visualizer system perfectly you need to check it same thing if you, i was telling with the pymol having some kind of problem same thing with the same protein if you are opening uh, so here you may not get any kind of dotted line the pymol is not going to show over here because the algorithm set in according to that and here a lot of water molecule also you can see and when you have projected both the protein uh, here the rmhd value whatever i am getting the rmhd value differing from the um ucsf chimera result so here rmhd value 0.394 so that's the thing uh, when you supposed to use the pymol and when you supposed to use the chimera that also idea also is very vital for protein modeling purposes so py chimera uh, pymol if you are using it is not going to solve your criteria at all so anyhow so you got the idea which particular protein supposed to you select by based on the blast by based on the structural uh, comparison and you are going to work on that now you open the swiss model and you open the home page so which particular protein sequence suppose you need to take already you came to know from this structural comparison the protein which does not have any kind of uh, salt structure means um, uh, default amino acid residues or unsolved amino acid residues uh, so you are not selecting that particular protein hmm. so here uh, though i have taken uh, taken the human um uh, for my uh, uh, uniport cys the protein i have taken from uniport but still i am not uh, considering after looking the blast and the result parameter that human model only that human uh, pdb structure model i am depending on the galas because that protein have solved perfectly and the protein does not have any kind of missing residues so i hope you got the idea and uh, next i am opening that particular uh, swiss model i am taking the uh, this first format sequence of that particular uh, protein of the galas i am pasting over here and after pasting of course always you need to go for first search template model okay so you are clicking on the search for template 
and then the this is the waving result will be continued that is going to indicate that it is going to work with all with respect to all and each residues and the final result will be coming this way uh, so this is the result again here many things it note down so here the first model whatever given the first model related structure also it will be presented here and you can go through the down many other solved structure also they will be given and for all the cases you need to look at uh, that uh, gmq value so look at here you need to consider the gmq value then um, also the query coverage and uh, these are very prime important to select the actual uh, template and from there you have to build the model so if you are clicking on this uh, the blue bar whatever is written if you just uh, flip your cursor over here and if you do the single click you are going to get here i mentioned what are the things you are supposed to consider when you are uh, taking this particular model or building this particular model so global model quality assessment that is gmq it is indicating the target and the template uh, template alignment quality um, basically it is going to indicate by the gmq and the gmq value should be between 0 to 1 and nearer to 0 it is going to indicate the better is the template so look at here the gmq value uh, nearer to uh, nearer to uh, it is uh, nearer to 0 so that means 0 0.89 it is 0 0.88 0 0.88 0 0.87 so like that it is continue 0 0.89 uh, so we can uh, we compare uh, we can consider this is near about the zero okay uh, so the gmq and query coverage everything you need to consider and you need to if, uh, in the by this uh, blue uh, bar whatever is given you just single click on that you can see which chain what is the coverage how many amino acids are there so here uh, whatever the 0 0.80 is uh, if you are getting here one minute here if you are getting uh, like uh, 1.00 this 1.00 means 100 percent covered if you are getting here uh, 0 0.80 that means indicating 80 percent coverage if you are getting here 0 0.75 that means 75 percent coverage okay with respect to uh, when they are compared sequence to sequence so now uh, you need to uh, click on so here 1.00 means 100 percent coverage as i already mentioned now uh, you need to go for this particular protein level uh, for making the build models uh, so for that you need to click on the build model so you can see here options build model is given just click on the build models within short period of time you are getting this kind of result and here also this models whatever prepared so that is the model actually right we are looking for okay uh, but uh, this model is perfect or not uh, so that also need to tally so for that you need to again uh, look at this uh, human score and gmq score and also the jet score then also you need to look for the sequence everything and after that if everything you are satisfying you can select this is the model and you can download it for doing the other work got it so cumin this always uh, it is be negative and it is basically the jet score value it is indicating so jet score value we are getting from here the cumin whatever is given if you click on that so we can get these are the three different graphical conditions and if you can zoom off it okay if we, we can we can able to zoom off it so here is the zooming option you can see this is the uh, blue part is indicating this is the target and with the target how perfectly it has match so that is going to tell you and this is a protein chain a uh, so it is going to match with that perfectly so that is basically uh, telling over here then you need to check the uh, graph so this is considered as based on the uh, in the iteration whatever I mentioned the decoy so it is based on that only and this asterisk rate whatever is indicating and which particular zone it is present that is going to tell you the model quality so here uh, there's uh, asterisk this model it's lying between uh, one and less than uh, two so this is the jet score value and if it is moving towards the um, uh, this minus by less than one this particular zone that means model is not proper and it is always preferable it should be present towards the high jet score conditions so we are getting here near about the towards high jet score so the protein model whatever you have detected yes that is the correct one and next uh, you need to check the sequence also uh, so sequence to sequence how it has they have matched and they have perfectly found these conditions and also
also the x-ray crystallographic conditions if the protein got solved what could be the x-ray range and what could be the Armstrong value and uh, the similarity coverage everything here also is mentioned and in this uh, build protein uh, anywhere if you are keeping you are keeping your cursor so immediately in this particular position of alignment that will be highlighted if you are clicking on this red it is going to highlight it. If you are clicking on the blue, that is also going to highlight it. Actually, uh, this blue uh, ribbon part, this is the cartoon form actually. This blue part is indicating this is the 100% coverage and co identified part, whereas this orange part, this part is indicating uh, with the help of uh, that um, uh, library, the looping library, they have considered this loop and they have a finding as per the energetical value this loop is suitable and they have projected this loop over here okay so this particular loop related information where in the sequence is present that also if you are clicking on the loop you are going to get idea so now uh, this way you are telling your the structure whatever the model you prepare the model is perfect or not and finally you can uh, able to download this model into the pdb format so after downloading it, your protein is ready in your hand. You can open in the uh, Chimera or the um, uh, Pymol here, and you can check again. You can study again this particular protein. That's it. And this is the same protein if you are opening to the Chimera. The resolution and the property is based. So I can see, I can study in better way. And you can look at here, there is a no proper dotted line. That means perfectly the entire positions of these proteins we have able to model. And 100% this protein I can able to use for my work. Again, for before going to the uh, using this model. Uh, so with this model, again, uh, uh, refinement is necessary. And this is the uh, uh, your Discovery Studio representation. So I'm having this software also. So Discovery Studio, it is going to tell you how the different color it is indicating where the loop, beta pleated sheet, alpha helix, etc. So this uh, blue color is indicating there's a beta pleated sheet, and the uh, right red part you can see this is the helix, whereas the green part this is the turn part. It is telling many other things we can do with this with the Discovery Studio. Anyhow. This is not my cup of tea. So before um, downloading uh, this particular model, uh, so you can, uh, there is al only having the option. Uh, so check the Ramachandran plot conditions. Uh, so it related to this model, this is the Ramachandran plot I am getting. And somehow these blue dots are indicating uh, if it is following this particular gray area. So this is indicating this is no, uh, these are outer, uh, means unwanted area, these particular amino acids are present. Okay, so you need to refine them. For refining them, what you need to do? This downloaded protein structure, uh, you need to open uh, the Galaxy refining uh, web uh, server. So Galaxy web, if you are getting, you just click on that. In the Galaxy web, uh, there will be having option here. Uh, this You can go for the uh, software options. In the software option, if you are going, you are getting the option called the Galaxy web protein um, uh, prediction condition. So here just you upload your this downloaded protein structure, the model, and initially just click on that. The result will come to your mail. Uh, so you are going to get this kind of result. So result, of course, I'm not showing here. So based five uh, predicted Ramachandran plot, they are going to give you and related to the model. So that model uh, and the Ramachandran plot, you can save and you can download that protein after refining with the Galaxy Wave and that protein only you can use for further work. So from the beginning I mentioned, uh, so template selection, proper way template, how you are aligning all those as aspects is necessary and how you are selecting the template, how you are building the model and when you are building the model, what parameters supposed to remember and after building the model, how uh, you are refining the model. That is another necessary things. So Galaxy Wave, this is freely available. You can uh, do it that. And finally, uh, whatever the proteins you are downloading, that is your actual ready protein for all kind of docking activity, for all kind of uh, the protein protein docking or protein ligand docking for all aspect. You can use that protein. And this way only all kind of uh, your uh, all good research paper in the various reputed journal, they are working this way only. And I follow the same protocol here. And if you are following the exact protocol, definitely 
your paper is going to accept. And nowadays, this is a hard, uh, it is a, like hot cup of tea. Uh, so everybody is working by sitting on the home to do some kind of research. And these are the good research area uh, to build a various kind of model with the various kind of protein. And you can try with the uh, SARS-CoV-2 protein. I'm uh, having different protein model with that, like uh, ACE2 receptor, how uh, the structure to be predicted and like uh, SARS-CoV, whatever the different uh, enzymatic proteins are there, spike protein. So if you are getting the sequence, you can build the uh, model with that and you can publish your paper with that. Thank you very much. I have taken um, uh, almost uh, half of the day. I'm sorry for that. And actually a lot of the portions I need to cover. So I have taken so much of time. Again, again, I'm sorry. No, 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 no need to sorry, sir. We should be thankful to you. In our uh, yesterday's class or session, we worked out uh, how we can perform the molecular docking studies. And uh, we, yeah. so in yesterday's, uh, we performed the protein ligand docking. I just demonstrated uh, how we can take the uh, protein and uh, how we can prepare the protein. So in most of the research papers, protein preparation step will be written. So in the protein preparation step, right, we will mention like the PDVID that we retrieved and then uh, we will say the heteroatoms are removed and uh, the Meraviroc, which is a bound ligand, was separated and considered for redocking. So all those information will be mentioned. If we give any amino acid flexibility, that will also be written. Then we will have like a ligand preparation step. And in the ligand preparation step, we will mention uh, uh, what is the energy minimize, how the energy minimization was done and what is the energy at the state when the minimization that is 598 or 640. So the ligand preparation step will be mentioned. Then the molecular docking. So, the entire process uh, will be explained with uh, like in detail it will be mentioned like as i was showing with the different papers right so okay i will share this paper not an issue so the explanation about the procedure followed will be so one can also write it the entire process like in a flow chart so this is the flow chart we have followed in one of our research work. And then, uh, as I mentioned, the small molecule ligand library and then the molecular docking. Then we will mention here, what is the XYZ coordinates, the size of the grid box, all those things. Then the autodoc Wiener score was visualized using PyMap. So this is what we will be doing it. And also we look into interaction analyzed using like plot plus software. So we will also generate the images, something like this. Okay. This is the leak plot image. Then we will also generate this and also this today. So how we can generate such images. Okay, so this is with the dynamic simulation. That's not so. How we can generate? In fact, we can also generate much better or high resolution images like this. So th that is what we will be doing it today. Okay, now we have to analyze the results. Right, yesterday I just demonstrated with the performing the docking but how to analyze the results. Now, the first thing is where exactly our result files are getting stored, right? That will be the first question. When you perform docking using PYRX, the output files are saved in the C drive, then users, then within this users, username, if you have 0.9 version, 
commercial then it will be like dot pyrx workspace if it is a 0.8 version it, it will save in dot mgl tools since we are all using with the 0.8 version right because that is freeware so the results will be in dot mgl tools then within this we will have a folder called pyrx and within this pyrx there are different folders the ligands that we considered will get stored into this ligand section the macromolecules that we have used will get stored into this macromolecule section okay so in your case the 4mbs underscore a will be stored in this because it's 0.8 version but since i am using 0.9 version so the results will get stored into dot pyrx workspace looks exactly the same then macromolecules then this 4mbs a so 29 7 2021 that is yesterday whatever the, the docking we did those results are saved within this okay so if you want to can make a note of the path okay where the files will get stored c drive then within that c drive users then in the users you can give any usernames then in that particular username dot mgl tools then in the dot mgl tools pyrx folder and within this pyrx folder macromolecules okay this is where all the files your docking files are getting stored with now once we have this macromolecules for mbsa these are all the files that are there now if we look into these files we took three ligands and one protein right maraviroc then there are two other ligands that we took for the docking just a minute okay so the ligands whatever we have so you just need to observe how it works we took three ligands so we will just work out with these three dates 29 29 29 one is maraviroc and other two were vikriviroc and aplaviroc so based on the chemical composition or molecular formula so c25 h40 is one compound c33 h44 is another compound or you can also remember based on the pubchem id so that it becomes easy to map so these are the three ligands that we have used now the results here in the ligands folder ligands folder whatever the ligands we use for docking all the ligands will get stored here okay irrespective of the projects all the ligands will get stored into this so other used ligands previous work right all these ligands are there now the macromolecule whatever we use so under the macromolecule folder these are the macromolecules used for mbs is what we are working with now for that macromolecule it will convert the pdb into pdb qt and get stored so if you want to see so this also we did yesterday the moment we upload the pdb 
right so the pdb gets converted into pdb qt okay so the q refers to the charge and t refers to the structure pdb is our tertiary or three dimensional structure format so pdb qt this is the macromolecule structure and these three are our small molecule output files if you observe here we will have it like underscore out dot pdb qt then this particular ligand out dot pdb qt and then mrv dot out dot pdb qt so the moment if you look into the ligands it is not going to have it like mrv dot out it is just mrv dot pdb qt or c25 dot pdb qt because it is just the coordinates not the outputs okay now within this if we want to see the interaction or anything if you right click say edit with notepad plus plus okay you can see the energy associated okay so you can see that there are nine models model one venus score so yesterday also when we performed we observed this minus 12.2 is the least energy then we were we have a second model minus 10.8 then third model minus 10.3 what is this model 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 refers to is those are the nine confirmations okay so one may be like this like this like this like this so nine confirmations the ligand is going to have so for each confirmation let us say this is the first model or first confirmation so for each atom whatever we use it will have x y z coordinates and again occupancy b factor and the charge associated to that atom so it is going to use this x y z coordinates to generate the 3d confirmation or it is going to using these 3d coordinates we can see the or we can visualize the molecule then the second confirmation third confirmation like this okay now if we open the C33, again, we will have the same, the energy or the Venus score, as I mentioned, better to call it like a Venus score. Then for each atom, right? Here also, it is the same like our PDB. First atom, oxygen, since we are not given any name for the ligand, it's used like unknown, UNK, then N, the, the N chain, it is going to create it like chain N everything is representing one molecule so it is continuing to be one just like a chain then x y z coordinates and uh, for this since the energy minimization has happened we do not have any occupancy or b factor only for the maraviroc we have because it's a crystallographic structure okay then again second confirmation third confirmation fourth fifth like this now if you want to see the interaction between how is the Meroviroc interacting with the CCR5, right? So using, you can also open this PYRX tool, okay? One can open this and then uh, you can save the complex or visualize. If you want to analyze the results, right? You, you're, what if, if you have closed this window, but you want to analyze the results? within the pyrx there is an option analyze results you can say like plus then if you open the 4mbs and meraviroc open if you do right we will get back to the same stage whatever we closed it yesterday so this is the confirmation of the ligand when it is there in the minus 12.2 this is the confirmation for minus 10.8 here's the confirmation so if you observe right so the ligand is changing its confirmation. How many such confirmations are there? Nine confirmations are there. Okay. Now, when it is like minus 12.2 Venus score, kilocalories per mole, whether the interaction of this ligand is same as the crystallographic interaction of the Maravira with the protein. That is what we want to check okay our aim is to check if we if i have to bring back the 
understanding right this is what we discussed yesterday 4 mbs which is the complex then we created this ccr5 protein only then maraviroc which was there within this 4 mbs we separated it out then we used it as a ligand to do the docking we wanted the vena score because from the pdp we won't get that one when we performed the docking we got to know the uh, in mrv is interacting with the human ccr5 this energy minus 12.2 vena score or energy then we have other ligands that we will compare now whether i should take minus 12 as energy or minus 10 whatever is obtained so whether i should take minus 12.2 or i should take minus 10.8 or minus 10.3 or minus 10.2 which one i should take so to get that information just a second sorry Sorry for that. Now, which one I should take? Whether minus 10.1 or minus 10 or minus 10.8 or minus 12.2. Now, why it has generated nine confirmations? It is because all nine are the possible conf uh, confirmations of this Maravi rock to interact with human CCR5. Okay. So, if I <coughs> load the 4MBS. Now, here is our protein and here is our ligand. Now, this is one kind of interaction. This is second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth. Now, whether this is considered to be a correct, uh, like whether this confer, if this confirmation matches with the crystallographic confirmation then we will take minus 12.2 as our energy if this confirmation matches with the crystallographic confirmation then we will take minus 10.1 as our energy okay now can i put the uh, confirmation of the maraviroc whatever was there in the crystallographic yes docking we have that file mrv.pdv right open that then if we open that one and visualize right so here if we observe mrv is our crystallographic confirm confirmation and if i remove the pro protein we can return and this is our talking confirmation there is a slight change between these two okay it is not like 100 percent but more or less it is matching okay only these atoms are having some variation but it's almost identical so we can generate the leak plot for this and then we can see whether the interaction is same or different but when i show you how to generate the leak plot then you will get to know like why are we visualizing in the first stage here itself right uh, rather than generating the leak plot that you will get to know this is first confirmation 
second confirmation if you look into the second confirmation now the deviation is slightly high compared to the first one right here if we look this is overlapping more this is getting reduced this is getting further reduced these are moving a lot and this is further reduced but this is another possible interaction the ligand can have okay this is further this is another one this is another one this is another one right now if we look into the atoms are there in a completely different orientation so this is not the right confirmation which is matching with the crystallographic this is not matching with the crystallographic this is not matching with the crystallographic not matching not matching not matching somehow matching but between these two minus 12.2 is matching a lot than minus 10.8 okay in your research when you are doing we may have a situation like the least energy may not be matching accurately so if it is minus 10.8 which is matching so go ahead with the minus 10.8 no you don't need to take this minus 12.2 okay in few cases even in many of my docking when i performed these confirmations will have a better uh, interaction than this that means minus 12.2 may be having only hydrophobic interaction but minus 10.1 may be having one or two hydrogen bonds so if you want to consider even with the hydrogen bonds we will go with this confirmation and then go for a study but what is recommended is we need to analyze all nine confirmations okay then look in all nine confirmations how many times to which particular amino acid the ligand is forming a hydrogen bond in all nine confirmations if there is a fixed amino acid to which the ligand is forming a hydrogen bond so that is given a highest priority that it is preference to form hydrogen bond with that particular residue that is how the interpretation now we want to see right whether the docked confirmation is going to generate the similar kind of a lick plot since there is small variation in few regions right between the crystallographic kind this i hope you are able to make out the difference if you want i can make it like one as a line representation i will remove this uh, anyway we can do see that's that is why we may not be able to do a lot with this pyrx because it is not a visualization tool but if we open this in the pymol now we can do a lot of analysis now the reason why i have done this quick analysis which confirmation i should use or which confirmation is going to match with the crystallographic confirmation is which confirmation i should visualize a lot in the pymol okay so for that purpose we will quickly analyze here so minus 12.2 that's the first confirmation is matching with the crystallographic confirmation so once we get to know this we can close this window okay open the pymol so whatever the uh, in the drive link whatever i have shared so the pymol is also there in it you can open the pymol this is taking some time okay so then once you open the paymal oil open now you have to open the outdoor pdbqt see there's the one of the advantages with reference to this new version of paymal wherein we can read the output file of the vena directly 
previously that was not the case we were using the autodoc tools then load the protein load the ligand and then make it like one complex then open in the pymol or open it for the doc yeah, lick prod so that was a bit tedious process but now the process is uh, optimized and we are able to open the doc file in the pymol itself then go to users and then files are there within this macro molecules for mbs we want to open mrv of dot pdbqt open this okay now we have the ligand file present here if we want to see how is the now in the pymol we have an option to see all nine confirmations right here if you write if you see the right bottom one out of nine then if you click this so it will take to the second confirmation okay so all nine confirmations but if we want this is the first one second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eight and nine confirmation okay so all nine we can see in the paymall if we want to compare with the mrv here also we can do okay so that is why paymall is a widely used one of the best uh, visualization tool that we have now we can change the background okay to white so that it becomes easy now which one is docked confirmation and which one is our crystallographic confirmation mrv if you look into the right side mrv is refers to crystallographic underscore out is the docked confirmation because the file name itself is mrv underscore out so that it is taking now here if we want to label or give different colorings to identify which one is so you have an option to show right as sticks or mrv we want to give right we can make it like show dots action present ball and stick so we have made the mrv crystallographic as ball and stick now and the mrv dot out right we kept it as stick representation now which one is coming close to this this is the first one second third fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth right so now we can easily identify this is the closest one we can also open the pdb file so go for open okay always file open and if we want to open the out.pdbqt we can go back to users username okay now you can see the protein you can see the ligand or two ligands and one is the dog to confirmation another one is the crystallographic uh, confirmation so if you click for mbs that is like select and deselect so if i deselect the protein portion will go select the protein portion will come okay that is how you can make the we will look into how to calculate the distances or energies all those things now since i know that the mrv out is close to mrv right i will deselect the mrv retain only the mrv out and for mbs these two here and then you have an option to save this as a complex now if i bring back our understanding whatever we were doing 
right? This is what we did yesterday. For MBS, we split into two files. One as protein.pdb, another one as mrv.pdb. Now to generate the leak plot, something like this, we need to have a single file, okay, single PDB file having a protein and ligand together. Okay, we need to have a single file having protein and ligand together. So to create that complex file, we can generate that complex file using PyMol. Okay, using PyMol itself, we can create that complex because from this, it is difficult to know to which amino acid the ligand is forming a hydrogen bond. Okay, to which particular amino acid the ligand is forming a hydrogen bond. There are some options we can select and then say like uh, find polar contacts to any atoms and if there are hydrogen bonds, it is going to show here. But there are, but it is still not clear with the hydrophobic interactions. What all the other amino acids where the hydrophobic interaction is there. So one of the easiest method is open the complex in PyMol, both the protein and the ligand, then go for file, export molecule, whatever you are seeing, right? That it is going to save. So my current, because I have deselected few portion of the ligands, like portion means, I am not saving the crystallographic MRV. I have deselected here. So whatever you select, only the ligands or the coordinates it will save. It is not going to save these uh, polar bonds or other stuff. Then file, export molecule, save. We want to save it in a PDB format. Then save this one. Either you can save it in your PYRX folder or you can save it in the docking folder that we have created. So here you save it as 4MBS underscore MRV underscore dot complex dot PDB. Okay, so 4MBS MRV dot complex dot PDB. If you want to be more specific, you can say like first confirmation. Okay, dog to complex one dot pdb save because this is one if you want to save the second confirmation right if you go for second now if you want to save this one again you can go for file export molecule save select this pdb and change from one to two then save this one second confirmation third confirmation fourth fifth sixth seventh eighth ninth right so let me save one more confirmation ninth confirmation so save pdb so that we can get to know how is the interaction variation happening nine dot pdb save so in my our original docking folder right we will have now the three folders three files being created. So when we started yesterday, we had 4mbs.pdb. Then we removed uh, MRV and uh, removed all the hetero atoms. We created this 4mbs underscore A. The MRV we created separately. Then we downloaded the 2D and the 3D of the two ligands. After docking, we saved this CSV file, comma separated file. The advantage of this particular file is if we open, we will get the ligand name and also the energy. Okay, so that is the advantage. This is for one ligand and its bending affinity. This is for the second ligand and its bending energy. This is for the third ligand, Maraviroc, and its energy. Okay, so we can save it as Vena analysis.csv from the PORX. Now, the dogged complexes, I am saving it. This is the first confirmation, second confirmation, and then the last confirmation or ninth confirmation. Now I am interested to see the first confirmation, Meraviroc, right? This is MRV, Meraviroc, first confirmation, how it is interacting with the protein. So to visualize that, we need the leak plot. 
right? So the link plot I have already shared. So go to, if you have installed, right? So when you have downloaded, it may come something like this, link plus underscore new or whatever, unzip that one. So you will have the files coming out like this. If in your computer Java is installed, you can see something like this. This is the symbol of the Java. If it is not getting like this, if the Java is installed, you can say like open with then Java platform. Okay. Now, once you right click and say open in the Java, uh, it says like, okay, it's license has expired. Cannot run. So for others also getting the same error. Okay, I think I got to purchase the Okay, so this I will share, maybe can download this and save it into plus plus maybe July twenty twenty one. Now, if I extract, now I have this newer version. This should okay. So, as this is the first time Lipper is running on your computer, you need to define the various parts. It says okay. okay, then it will ask for this. You don't need to change anything keep all the things as it is okay and then pymol executables uh, we have to give the pymol link here so the pymol wherever the pymol is installed right so that path on your check so this is there in this c drive so give that particular path here then save Okay, now the lip plot is going to open. It looks something like this.
Now, this is how the home page of the leak plot looks like. We want we the only file that it accepts is the PDB file. Okay, it is not. Once we create the uh, leak plot, then we can save it as .drw draw file. That file we can open it open it again later. But the file that it accepts is the PDB. That is why I have created this PDB file, which is a protein ligand complex. First conformation complex, second conformation complex, ninth conformation complex. So if you have it in any other format, the leak plot is not going to identify, is not going to work. Then go for file, open, PDB, browse, and all our files we can go to Working first confirmation. Select this, then save. Now it is going to give like how whatever the heteroatoms are there that it is going to represent here. Okay, since we have only one heteroatom, one ligand, it is going to show like this. Then don't make any changes, keep everything as it is. Say run. So once it is done right we will have the leak plot generated so this is how a typical leak plot is going to look like So in this leak plot, you can observe, this is the leak plot for the docked, confer docked conformation. So here it shows like we have our two hydrogen bonds with tyrosine 37 and tyrosine 251. I will, if you want, we can just move here. And now if I open, This is the docked comp, sorry, the crystallographic confirmation, whatever they have provided. Now we, we need to compare these two. So you don't need to worry about whether the ammonia acid is there above or below or whatever. What is important is whether the nitrogen of this is forming a hydrogen bond with this, okay? Whether these two ammonia acids are involved in the hydrogen bond or not that we have to check. So the tyrosine 37 and tyrosine 37 is there. Tyrosine 251 and then tyrosine 251, yes. Two hydrogen bonds and two hydrogen bonds, whatever crystallographic is given, whatever we obtained is exactly matching, right? So two hydrogen bonds are matching. Hydrophobic may have some variation, but still we can just check how many are overlapping, how many are matching. So if we do it from this side, leucine 2 to 255, whether leucine 255 is there within this, yes, we have leucine 255 opposite to fluorine, yes. Then do we have isoleucine 188? Yes, isoleucine 198 is there. Threonine 195, threonine 195 is there. Methionine 279, methionine 279 is not there but yes few residues are overlapping just need to check in few cases even if two or three residues overlaps even one residue if it overlaps that is more than enough because that gives a clear information that the grid box you set is correct if none of these residues are going to come in your leak plot that means 
the active site or binding region is here but you have set the grid box somewhere else so that is why the ligand is interacting with other residues none of these residues are there in your lead plot that means the grid box setting you made a mistake that is one of the ways by which you can cross check and as i mentioned we have sufficient the hydrogen bond itself is coming that is more than enough so even if the hydrophobic common acids is not going to match should not be a problem okay now once we have this lick plot okay so today we will spend some time in uh, generating the images okay now this is well, this is with the first confirmation right so how is the interaction with the second confirmation so say replace do you want to save changes to current file no then browse let's take the second confirmation and then say generate the lead plot yes so the second confirmation again two hydrogen bonds are there because if you remember the first confirmation and the second confirmation not much of a difference is there right so this is with the first confirmation this is with the second confirmation some amount of variation but the positions of the atoms are almost so if you want one can compare this interaction with the first confirmation okay then you can decide if this is correlating much better with the crystallographic then you can take this okay you don't need to take that that's how so we will take the ninth confirmation and see how is the interaction replace no browse ninth confirmation There is only one nitrogen bond with the tyrosine 37, but other amino acids are having hydrophobic interaction. And again, if you check whether these residues are matching, right? So we need two, but we have only one. But we got two in the first confirmation itself. So better to go with the first confirmation. And the first confirmation binding energy, right? This is the first confirmation. The first confirmation binding energy, we take it as our reference. Okay. Now in the same way, now if I have to see the interaction, this is the 2D. So we can save this file as a postscript file, write PS file. Since this is the first confirmation, so your file format is .ps. Keep everything as it is. Rather than .pdb, you make it like .ps, postscript file. Okay, then save it. Now, if we want to see the three-dimensionally, how is this interaction happening with the protein? Click this PyMob. On the right side, we have option like PyMob. You click. Then it is going to show the interaction between the protein. How, and how the sir? Yes, how you sir. have opened the pi mole? Pi mole on the right bottom. You have the pi mole. So if this is not enabled for you, okay. So it is because. We are not given, sorry, we are not given the path. So that is why it shows in the beginning path. Okay, okay, okay. So if we have provided this, if I have a rasmol and if I give the rasmol path here, then we will also get that option of the rasmol. Mm -hmm. So if we have rasmol installed, otherwise leave blank or enter none. So since I have Paymol, I will give this. Compared to Rasmol, Paymol is sophisticated, much sophisticated and easy to use. In Rasmol, we, it works more with the command line. So here we have a click and go options in the Paymol. So that is why uh, Paymol uh, has taken the uh, 
preference over the rest mode. So now if you click this by mall, right? Now you have the, now what is done is whatever the 2D is there, this is all two dimensional, okay? So all this two dimensional gets converted into three dimensional because for each atom, right? For each atom in this, three dimensional coordinates is already there so that it has taken and made it into a 3D. Now we can rotate. There were two hydrogen bonds. Yes, we can see the two hydrogen bonds here, right? Still, the way it looks now is not that good. So one of the things one should remember is whenever you are generating any three dimensional diagrams, keep your background white. Okay, never ever take the images by keeping the background back. So again, when you communicate later, the publisher will ask you to change it into white background. So why is that? The reason is it is assumed that whoever reads your paper, right? They will take the printout and then read. So if you keep the black background, so it is going to consume a lot of ink when they go for it, taking the printout. So it is better to keep the background white because our sheets that we use for the printout is white background. So that is why keep it, make it white background. And then you start rotating to get a feel that which orientation is best suited to explain the interaction. Now, if I keep it like this, right now i can show the hydrogen bond the ligand portion and the amino acids and uh, the region where the amino acids are present everything i can i can see now whether these amino acid labels are proper in the sense is clearly visible no the amino acid labeling is not clearly visible now in the PayMall, we have an option to decrease or increase the label size. So if you want to change that one, go to settings, label, size. Now presently it is 14. If you want to reduce it, you can give it like 10. So still get reduced. Or if you keep it like 24, increase. Now you can see it. Now well, it is still becoming difficult to see what is this residue or what is there. There are two overlapping in this region. Is it possible to move the labeling? Yes, it is possible to move the labeling in the PyMark. So what you can do is on the right bottom, right? Or in the right bottom in your mouse, just click your left one. Then it moves from viewing mode to editing mode. Okay, if you click here, the mode will change from viewing to editing. Once we get into editing mode, okay, so we can always move the labeling. This is solution. I will show you how why it is showing so many solutions of other stuffs. Now tryptophan, it is also coming out like this. So if you want, keep it here. Glutamic acid, keep it here, right? This 3.15, make it a move here. This 3.24, you place it here. Whatever the redundancy is there, right? You you can move that residue so that the reader can easily identify or should be able to get to know which amino acid it is. Okay. Again, the SMIMOL itself is a wonderful tool. Okay. It takes a lot of time to uh, get familiar with this. But if you know what is the what are the possibilities, right? And that itself is more than enough. You can always, as I mentioned, you can contact a person who knows with the PyMal and ask him like, uh, please generate the image, something like this and give it to me. 
so life becomes very easy you can for all the amino acids right you can place them at a right location where the readers can look into and these are all here i just moved a one fragment okay now more or less most of the amino acids are visible so you can this is a, this is a long process okay what the meaning is uh, for good quality image to generate to explain whatever the ideas you have or whatever the Uh, principle involved or how is the ligand interaction there are so many things you want to explain so to explain all your concepts right whatever you have in a three dimensional way you may have to spend sometimes around 3 to 4 hours okay so to get a good quality one image so if you want to if you want me to show some of such images let me just show you i'm just opening the ppt so this is what i have done yesterday right so this is this this image this is also generated using pymol okay so i will just show you how we can generate now to generate the this kind of image where what is the what is that i wanted to convince uh, to the readers is the ligand is interacting with these residues in in the beginning in the dynamic simulation then after 5 or 10 nanoseconds of the time the ligand moved from this portion to this portion it flipped to this and continues to interact here so initial interaction here with this histidine 91 serine 89 lysine triple 1 right aspartic acid or as 61 these residues then in the loop region we have methionine in 67 which is having a flexibility then it moved from this region to another pocket and started interacting with these residues now what well, now if we make it like what are the things that i did in this so we have to show the protein right also show the loop region also show where the methionine is present how will you represent the first pocket so these residues i selected as a stick and given one color the second pocket these residues given with another color then you got to make it like a glassy look right so somewhere the shining and other stuffs then give a different coloring this is made it like green color and this is made it like a pink color then tell like the background with the brown color right that is the first pocket the one with the blue color surface is the second pocket and shift it from this to this so now if the whole story explanation the whole interaction becomes very easy with this image now what if if the image is not there so you got to explain it in detail by mentioning these residues right and then flip to this region how far is this region where is it present so explaining becomes too difficult but of course to generate this particular image right it took around 4 to 5 hours so in the same way here i am just starting with this but to have a good quality without having any of these backgrounds something whatever we can see right here also there are some residues so to have a clear uh, good quality image so it is going to take this is already there so this is going to take around 4 to 5 hours so each amino acid we got to look manually and place them in an appropriate place where as i mentioned the readers can see 
don't place it somewhere which is too difficult to and this is the hydrophobic there are two hydrogen bonds this is first one and the second one right so hydrophobic regions then once we have this okay once we have it like this what is the way by which i can save this file so three is not clearly visible place it you can place it over here now once we have this then we have an option here on the right top draw or ray now what we can observe is these curves are not in a smooth way right there is something like a cut now if i use this ray draw and give it something like usually the papers accepts 600 dpi so you can give that 600 dpi again previously this was a quite challenging task previous versions of the pymol we were using the trial and error mesh, uh, trial and error method we are giving the height and the width and then checking sometimes this portion was covering sometimes this portion was getting covered so the entire protein coverage was a tedious process but now we have an option here we can just tell what we want previously this option was not there this was there so we used to type this 6800 by 3347 or whatever how will we get to know whether we should give this or this that is what the challenge was just a second okay now once we feel like the structure is appropriate with the right labeling and everything we will go for this draw or ray so as i, I was mentioning previously we used to give this 5000 and 3000 then we used to see like there was some portion cut now that challenge is removed off so we can just clearly just mention what is the quality we want it is going to cover the entire screen okay whatever is there with that quality 8600 dpi so the ray becomes uh, more accurate if i say this ray is slow but it takes hours of time okay but if i say like draw fast so it is going to do the task bit fast but still the quality will be maintained around 600 dpi so say draw fast okay now it has captured and is showing the 
image here then you got to save save image to file then i will save this particular file within our docking folder and this is our 4mbs first complex right so the format by which it saves is png file okay 4mbs mrv docked complex 1.png then save now in our directory we will have this png file okay which is around 2.8 mb now if we open this in any of our visualization tools okay windows photo viewer or whatever you can see the three dimensional structure so why do we do with the 600 dpi is even if you zoom in right see the quality is still maintained if i save the same image just to show you if i go for saving the same image let's say 90 dpi draw fast save and i will save this one as underscore 90 dpi png and if we go for comparing the structure right it is just two not one kb and if i visualize this structure open with right now this is 90 dpi and this is 400 dpi okay so if we just look into right quickly so the resolution goes bad just you and we zo zoom in but here when we zoom in the resolution is not getting affected so the quality is still well maintained okay so that is why if i zoom in to see already the 3.24 has become blurred but here if i zoom in right so the 3.24 is still intact so we can increase even the dpi okay Just look at the difference how is the oxygen atom and how is here so that is why you it is recommended that you always save the file with 600 dpi okay that's the mandatory if you want with a higher let's say one can save up to like 1200 dpi also but it takes more time let's say if i give 1200 dpi and draw more space it is going to take let's save this one as 1200 dpi sir please repeat the step which one sir draw array yes sir yeah now i have saved it with 1200 dpi right now if you look the file size is 7 mb 7.6 mb 600 dpi is 2.8 mb 90 dpi is just 200 kb now how to save now if we go for comparing this further i will just show you how we can generate this is 1200 dpi right even if we zoom in right the quality of the atoms are very very intact this is not the case even when we have it like sorry 600 dpi but the file size increases that is why we go with 600 is optimized now how to get is okay this we will generate and from this go to draw array okay you will get this option then within this option you can type or select if you type 600 sorry if you type 600 you are 600 dpi image will be saved 
draw first. Now it's clear, sir, how to get this option. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want to generate, now if I zoom out, whatever the multiple names that were there that it is showing here. Okay. Now, if we don't want any labeling to happen, right? We can say like hide. Here, how is this primal? A refers to action. S refers to show. H refers to hide. L refers to label. C refers to coloring. So we can hide label. So all the labels are gone now. If I want to give the entire molecule a one kind of a color, right? If we select on the top, everything will get selected. All becomes everything. If I want to select or do a color change only for one uh, molecule, let's say the ligand, I want to give a different coloring. So just select here, which one is giving the ligand portion. All right, so this is with the ligand. Now coloring, if I are to give red, becomes red color, okay? If you want to give any other color, greens, green, right? Only the ligand is changing now. So if I have to, uh, let's say the hydrophobic in the background to give some color, so we can give that. So these hydrophobic residues have become all these are the hydrophobic residues. These two are the hydrogen bonded residues, right? So this, why we went from lick plot and then moved it to uh, pymol is, I don't need to select. So if you recall whatever we did, I can select the ligand even when I opened, then show action and then set like interactions. But it becomes too difficult to know which one is hydrophobic, which one is hydrogen bonded amino acid, all those things. But if we open through this lick plot and then open the pymol, so it is clearly differentiating. All these are the hydrophobic common acids. Tyrosine 251 and tyrosine 37 are the two hydrogen bonded amino acids. These two are the our two amino acids. Now, if you want to label Right, I don't want to label the hydrophobic amino acids. I want to label only the um, hydrogen bonded amino acids. So it's easy, you just select this amino acid, right? And you can also select this amino acid. These two are the hydrogen bonded residues. Now I want to give the label because labeling I have remote for everything. Then it shows SELE refers to selected. It has selected these two amino acids. Then I want to label, go for label, then say residues, okay? Now we got these two residues labeling done. Again, if you want to put these labeling in a particular position, make it into editing mode, hold the control button and then place it. Right, it's very clear now. Now, the if you want to get the hydrogen bonding, right? Hydrogen bond, wherever it is there. This is label. This is one, two, three, hydrophobic. Now hydrogen bond label This, sorry, uh, we should go back to viewing mode for everything. This is one, this is another one. Again, select it. Then say label, and uh, if we say like the distance, we can get the distance. And if, if you think that the representation of the hydrogen bond is not proper, okay? Right, if we look into right, the representation of the hydrogen bond is not good or it's not very nice, in fact. So what we can do is we can select this, this we can remove, hide, 
whatever we have selected you can say hide everything okay so hide everything now this is gone Uh, what I made is just deselected these hydrogen bonds. Now, if I want to, usually in the papers, you will get the hydrogen bonds as a yellow color dotted lines. Now, how can I get those yellow color dotted lines is first you can retain them as it is just now you can use this wizard measurements and go to distances distances okay we can calculate the angle dietral angle and everything go for distances i will repeat wizard measurement okay and then we want the distance between two atoms that is the hydrogen bond distance so select this distances then say distances now it share then here it is asking like please click on the first item or the first atom so you select this first atom and then select the second atom now here you select the first atom and you select the second atom now you got the distance now if i remove these two right so we can easily make out even if the image is something like this now if, if this is becomes very easy to locate where exactly the hydrogen bonding is again the distance is not overlapping so place it aside so that becomes very easy to visualize okay so we have our bond hydrogen bond distance ready then say done right so in the same way it, we can one can continue to work so if you don't want this uh, uh, colors if you want to change you can always do that okay if you don't want anything in specific give it like this each atom coloring we can change okay so that's the level by which we can work out and if you don't want any other portion Okay, only the portion that you want to represent, just select and deselect. That's the best option. Now I want to show, if your interest is to show the protein also, right? So then we can load, file, open, and we can open our doc, uh, we, we can open the PDB. So only HN or you can go back to your c drive and then the users and then uh, macromolecules then for mbs underscore a dot pdbqt because we know it is not having any zinc ions or any cofactors or anything just say open okay now this is how it is going to look now one if you look into some of the papers right if you want i can again show you any paper where the representation will be like uh, right so in few papers you would have observed something like this so they will represent the entire protein then mark 
the portions and then highlight that interaction. This is something like, this is the entire protein and then this is where the ligand is interacting. That portion is highlighted and represented over here. So if you want to do such kind of a representation, right, this is the entire protein, right, then you first take the image of this entire protein. Okay, the way you want can make it. If you don't want any of these things to be represented in the first instance, you can deselect everything. Okay, you can just select this showing where the interaction is, where the ligand is present and where the protein is present. Then you are giving a hint that this is where the ligand is. So again, go back to your draw, make it like 600 dpi, say draw fast. Then you have the full image of the CCR5. Let's save this one under our so saving is the most important aspect okay you have to be careful where you are saving you can always label with your convenience you can give it like full view dot png save this <coughs> now once you save this particular file Okay, so once you save this particular file, you can always go back to your folder just to cross check whether the file got saved or not. Okay, just double click. Yes, so we have the full image. If you want, you can copy this. Okay, you can open one. Uh, I will also show you how you can prepare your own such images. Open the PowerPoint make it like a blank and first put this image okay then we can crop <coughs> then place it then we want to show this portion right the interaction then you go back to your pymol then you just select the region which you want to highlight so deselect the protein that's what the advantage is deselect this and select the entire region whatever you are interested in then zoom this if you want you can further zoom in okay so you can further rotate As I mentioned, you can decide which orientation is best suited. But most of the time, the thing is care should be taken that whatever the initial uh, image you generate, right? If it is something like this. So even when we deselect, we should continue just zooming in, okay? But if it is not possible by any of the means to zoom in and see, you can rotate, okay? That is not a problem. Then these two are highlighted, deselect. Okay, now we have a clear information. We have the residues representing. And if you don't want this green color for the ligand, right? You can keep it like this, or you can give like this. Okay, so that if you keep it like green or one color, we may not be able to know what kind of a atom is interacting. So usually, in uh, nitrogen is given with the blue color, oxygen red color, okay. So if the coloring is not made, this is how it will be. So the nitrogen to oxygen, nitrogen to oxygen, hydrogen bonding is that. You can, if you want to represent the ligand alone in a different representations, okay. So you can always make it like present ball and stick okay 
when should we use such situations right if you have that particular question so maybe i will just show you another uh, situation where we had that So here in this particular paper, okay. So we generated this. I have generated this one. Now, when will we have such situation? Or what I am explaining here is why I should make the ligand as a different different representation. Okay, I would have kept it as a stick representation only. But what if? If you keep it as a stick representation, okay, and if you want, if you are asking the readers to take a color printout, okay, because your explanation, you are making it like the pink color represents the hydrophobic amino acids, and the one with the silver color is the hydrogen bonded amino acids, and then in the center, the ligand is made it as a green color. So if this is the case, if you are telling, right, then the journal will ask you to pay for that color image. Okay, you got to pay for that. Now, one of the ways to get rid of that particular problem is use the representations. Okay, use the different representation options that are available. Rather than explaining it in the green color, you change this into a ball and stick model okay make it into a ball and stick model then if you want okay specifically if you want you change the sorry you change the ligands with a different representation hide everything make it like show lines okay or make it like a line representation for example then hydrophobic is stick hydrogen bonded is line ligand ball and stick now the reader is not required to take a color printout because he can easily identify the difference with reference to symbols that is the ball and stick you are made it like for the ligand so you can easily make out where the ball and stick is where the stick is where the line is so that was the problem when we first generated this image right everything was there in a one type then they asked us to pay for the processing pay for the coloring then we changed it so what is that i made is again if you look right hydrogen bonded with the different so then we have interaction of this ligand naphthalidine represented by stick that is this stick representation for one ligand after the day. And philanthinin is another one, is represented by ball and stick at the active site of this protein using pymol. Hydrogen bond formation between the serine 280, right? So you can one can easily see where the serine amino acid is. Serine 280 of the protein ALK5 with philanthinin because philanthinin is a ball and stick. So easily they can make out, okay, this is where the ball and stick, ball and stick represents philanthinin. And ASP351, here it is, of the LK file with naphthyridine. Now the naphthyridine is made it like a stick representation. Uh, is represented by dotted lines, hydrogen bond is there with the dotted lines. Now if the, if we do not use these options, ball and stick, stick, line dot then we may need to pay a huge amount basically in few of the cases to generate so if we do not know that option of using the options you got to pay so to avoid that it is better to learn some of these options and then a reader is not required to take it is very rare that we will have a color printer to take the color printouts for the when we want to read any papers. So when we have option, better to use it.
so that it makes life easy for the readers and also saves some of our money okay then you can highlight this now if you want to show the entire interaction like this but now i am not able to if you feel like this ribbon this is a ribbon representation is covering a lot we have an option here to give a transparency for the ribbon itself okay so transparency cartoon 80 percent okay now if i give you can see still the ribbon is present or the cartoon is still there highlighting the region where it is present so you can again you can go back see for one uh, good image you got to take multiple uh, images like this then one will decide which one is good okay then you can say like again uh, this is with the 600 dpi so interaction you can give it like now the 600 if you are you familiar you just type 600 then type like with protein okay save this now the way it looks here in the paymall and the way it looks when you open will be small difference okay that is why you need to open every time now you are representing the entire protein in the background you are representing the sticks where the hydrogen bond is there then these are the hydrophobic and here is the ball and stick representation with the hydrogen bond everything right so it goes with the what do you if you feel like i don't want the ribbon to be there i want to make it like a surface just go for this and say surface okay now you can see the entire protein in the surface i don't want any other things to represent deselect everything right and the transparency is more for this uh, surface remove of the transparency for the surface make it like off now you can see the entire thing right so this if you want you can rotate now you can see the hollow space where it is right so that is how usually the images are generated in most of the papers so this if you take a image right this clearly shows where is the path for the ligand to reach to the bending site okay this you can take as one image this becomes like one view then rotate 90 degrees and then take another image again you can rotate so that you can make the readers to visualize where if you want the cartoon also to be there because if see, that's why i'm explaining whatever you feel like you can do in the paymall uh, if somebody asks like what is the proof that this is the ccr5 so i will accept only if the seven transmembrane helices are there right then you make it like show cartoon right and then setting transparency for the cartoon you make it like uh 20 percent and give transparency for the surface 80 percent right now you can easily explain them this is the molecular right if we want to remove the transparency for the surface make it 60 percent okay now now you can easily explain them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven LSS are there. This is where the ligand is present. Right? You can further rotate. Even if you want to give some coloring, you can do all the options are there. By secondary structure. Right? Now you can easily see the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't want to show the surface now if suddenly if you feel like hide surface you got only the cartoon representation right and now if we further continue to look into right 
when we worked out, we got to know like this D or Y, three amino acids are highly conserved. Whether, where exactly those three residues are present in the protein, right? And if your explanation in the paper has to be there like whether the ligand is near to those conserved sites or is it far from this site, right? So if that is the explanation you want, you go for this display sequence, okay? Now look where exactly there's the DRY is. So I think it was from one one here it is because this is the conserved region. D, R and Y. I hope you are able to see this one. I don't think I can zoom in this further, but if you want, I can use the magnifier to represent. Right, so the magnifier, if I use, right? So this is that DRY, which is there in the position uh, 120, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, okay? Now, if we want, where exactly these three residues are present, right? So you select these three. Now those residues are selected over here. Make it like right click, show sticks, right? So the sticks representation happened. Now these three residues are present in this end. And you can label them also, label residues, right? Then this is where those three residues a r y that is the a is the sorry d r y aspartic acid arginine and tyrosine y represents the tyrosine and their corresponding positions again if you if we look into this right so these three residues we are not able to explain it properly because the ribbon is overtaking so transparency we cartoon give the 60 transparency now this is where the ligand is this is where the three residues are right again if you don't the if you feel like the labeling is high go for label reduce the size to like 14 right and then if you feel like the labeling is not appropriate go for editing move these residues move the labeling so that uh, sorry we can mutate the residues also okay so that is also whatever i'm doing right i'm changing the conformations i can do that okay if it requires the optimization to happen that is also possible in the pymal so now if i zoom out then we can see the ligand is interacting there the highly conserved portion is somewhere around here so that's the distance between these if we want to calculate the distance we can calculate the distance also so these are like this whatever you want to explain with reference to the interaction right you can do I am just demonstrating some of the options if your interest is to show the distance again go back to this wizard make the measurements go for a distances distance if somebody asks like or if you are interested to explain them what is the distance between the atom and the arginine right so you can select this atom and then zoom in what he wants is with the arginine right select this 25.9 angstrom is the distance. How far is the ligand from this arginine residue? Right, we can easily do this. And if if you want to check the angle, right, you can always calculate the angle also. So distances, just select like angles. And to calculate the angles, we need three atoms. Okay, so let us just, I will just show you as option here. 
what is the angle between these three atoms so if that is the question select this one two and three 114.5 degrees is the angle between this so if you do not want delete last object if you do not want this select delete all measurements then everything gets deleted so for whatever you want to explain right so now if i come back to this our full view is ready then go back to your folder we can put it like this this is done and i want to show this one then you copy this right and then paste so this image generation is a kind of a skill only okay and uh, what all the things that is possible so if you get to know right so uh, it becomes very easy to convince whatever you in, then you go for insert shapes and then uh, circle it out whatever the portion you want it this is what we wanted to represent then go for no fill right and if you want to give a coloring make it like a black color if you want to give increase the weight this much then again you use the shapes from here and then how big is this should be again you can give the coloring right so this is how the the typically you will prepare your presentation then you can again give the weight thickness the coloring okay so this is what is there in the other papers box or whatever then you can change the shapes later if this is not what you want right if you want it like this dotted lines you can make you want this i don't want to uh, change the shapes that's all it is all easy to do right if you want to put a box these things are fine actually so you can put some box for this if the ligand is interacting here right if uh, if we take another image then further zoomed position if you want to use then select another image again paste that one because the residue labeling is not there in this one but here we have a residue labeling done again crop this and then and in few papers right people do give these as the supplementary documents but uh, it takes a lot of time to generate the good quality or high, re high resolution and with the detailed information okay. so this if you put right this is not having the background of the protein but it is clearly telling where is the hydrogen bond right or what all the residues involved so and one of the advantage with the pymol i have to show you is let us say i am done with this now if you recall right in the sense it took a lot of time to reach to this particular stage it really took a lot of time to reach to this the protein giving the secondary structural coloring making the ligand to ball and stake and then uh, highly conserved residues labeling and the label size coloring stick 
and if I close this and if you were ask me to come back to the same stage right what if if somebody has I have like I'll just come back to this okay what if if the journal people ask like please don't give the structure with the labeling okay that is what happened even in one of the cases so you just give us the labeling because the font type that we have used is not supporting or is not what we usually use in our publication so they said like don't give me the structure with these labels just give me without labeled stick representation we will put the labeling with our own font whatever they uh, they have their uh, fixed font size for these residues then it is impossible to come back to the same representation because we have rotated multiple times so in which direction i rotated and coming back to the same like this trp86 to be there in this position all those things or the orientation of these amino acids so that becomes too difficult so what one of the advantage that is there in the pymol is let us say if i have done this one i have an option to save the session save session okay and then let's say i will just save this one as 4mbs full view okay and we will save it as dot pse by pymol session file okay 4mbs this is the full view if you want to give anything specific like conserved residues anything okay, conserved residues information is also there so your description can be as detailed as possible as long as you are able to identify what content is there in that particular file okay so that is for mbs full view but what if if i'm using with another protein another ligand so this is with 4mbs naraviroc full view with the conserved residue dot pse save this the moment you save this pse right even if i close this by any chance okay i have this pse file ready so if i but if i go for pymol again without this pse file saved if i open the pymol we will be from the beginning again you have to start loading that takes lot of lot of amount of time so what is that usually recommended is the moment you feel like you have done some work and generated a quality of the images and if you think this image may be required at a later point of time save it as a dot pse okay make it like 10 or 15 pse files no issues but only generating the image the moment you generate the image the best practice is the moment you generate the image save the same file name dot pse okay because you will be communicating this to a journal and he will ask like make it the same representation but give the coloring as a second structure then if you have that pse file if i if i open this again in the pymol right i will get back to the same stage where i stopped and if he asks like don't give me with this uh, red color for the helices please give me a different coloring right it is not difficult now i can just change this one to like green and give but generating or getting back to this stage is too difficult so always save the file in dot pse format and for each protein ligand interaction have as many images as possible like this and then whatever you want to convey the message put that one in the ppt like this then you can save this as an image and share it or in, in many cases uh, even they can the publishing house will do the other aspects like or draw or photoshop or enhancing the quality few of the aspects but the resolution they cannot do anything so you have to have a high resolution image that's the constraint 
once you have a good resolution image anybody can help you but if the quality of the image is poor nobody can enhance the quality of the image that uh, that is why 600 dpi acts like a standard okay so in the same way take the second ligand again open it in the pymov look for the interaction how it is whether the hydrogen bonding is there with the same thing or how it is that is that is how it goes so any doubts with whatever we discussed so far Um, sir, yeah. Singh sir, please ask. Yes, sir. No, no, Singh sir, what? Yes, sir. No, sir, there is no doubt. You have okay explained very nicely. Just I have to practice it more. Yes, sir. So, so yes, yes, yes. So, so yeah. Just need to use these options and. Uh, there is a lot lot of uh, images or can be done image generation labeling of the atoms if you want the labeling of this like label you can go to atom up to atom labeling can also be made now not just so this ligand with the nitrogen with everything we can represent coloring right if i remove this right now it becomes very easy nitrogen blue color oxygen red color bromine brown color so like that it becomes very easy these, coloring, for, these coloring are as per international convention yes sir yes sir that's the international convention so that is why it is always recommended to just go with this by element see in any of the options if we use so the nitrogen remains blue only oxygen remains red only sulfur is with one color so that is fixed so just the moment you look right you can easily identify what is that atom is thank you sir so any doubts from any anyone so this is the post docking analysis what i discussed so to do all these analysis right uh, it is required to understand about the protein first since we have discussed from the beginning about the human ccr5 right we know why we selected these three residues because prosite we did so where we got to know like arginine is highly highly conserved so if we do not know about the protein then we may not be able to do any analysis okay so the moment we know where is the extracellular where is the intracellular where is this residue where it is interacting how many analysis all those things we know now so it becomes very easy to generate the image and convince the message sir can we use ucsf chimera with leak plot or not in the leak plot uh, they are not given the option only rasmol or pymol yes yes rasmol or pymol once we have the complex right that complex we can use it in the vmd or chimera or uh, uh, discovery studio and we can see the different uh, pi pi interactions or whatever but uh, again taking into consideration of different programs uh, pymol again is the good one in most of the publications uh, you can see it generated through pymol so calculate rmsd value by superimposing one yes. protein to another 
yes we can do the superimposition even in the uh pi mall let's say if you want i can just show you that one this is the pi mall this is the uh, 4 mbs from the uh pdb then we also download it right i think 4 mbs or uh, this is from the uh, alpha fold so we can open this now we have both the proteins present right so this is from the alpha fold this is the crystallographic and if you want to check the rmsd between these two proteins so you can go to plugins then go for this alignments and then in this alignment what do you want to compare if i keep it like keep it default and then say okay both the molecules will get compared okay so the superimposition happened between these two proteins you can make it right both joined together now this is how the superimposed structure looks like if you want uh, again you can give one the crystallographic as green and the alpha fold structure as red since uh, the transparency is given so if we remove off the cartoon transparency off right now you can easily see the difference that is there between what is the rmsd between these two from the alpha fold and uh, we will have it here so the rmsd between the alpha fold structure and our model structure for mbs is 7.45 so an angstrom deviation is there between these two that now why yes geometrical difference yes so why it is because this region is full is not folded the red is the alpha fold and uh, this portion is further extended in the alpha fold but here it got stopped why it got stopped because it is not completely crystallized right so even if you want to know the position right if you just click over here on that it is going to tell this is the 313 position glycine 313 position but it is sorry but here it got extended and generated entirely that is the 352 residue but more or less it is overlapping wherever the core region is seven transmembrane regions so if that region is overlapping right see the helix is predicted as helix beta sheet is predicted as a beta sheet here right and also in the alpha fold we do not have anything from the clostridium but we have a region from the clostridium that is why it is the rmsd's variation but if we remove of these things and make it like a local rmsd value should be very close to each other and the alpha fold is a predicted model using artificial intelligence now people are everywhere is surprised something like when the computers can predict so accurately because transmembrane or membrane proteins are too difficult to determine now when you can generate the predict the generate predict the structure of the membrane protein up to so close to each other right just to get this 4 mbs crystallographic structure so much of amount would have spent cloning expression purification crystallization determination synchrotron usage all those things if you think but alpha fold which is just predicting the structure so close to each other just with seven angstrom variation right so and for all the proteins we are getting now for almost all the proteins we are getting the 3d structure so there is a huge discussion that is there with the structural biologists whether the crystallography will retain or whether 
that becomes like an absolute field right because when you can predict so close to the experimental right so why should you go for see the folding everything that it is making you are now in the uniprot if we type right you want in the uniprot which we did and if we type our uh, p51681 we have the alpha fold uh, structure available there now So that means it is accepted P51681 and in the structure when we were, when we were working right 198 only the crystallographic information were was there now we have the alpha fold available now predicted so that means it has entered into the reviewed category now because this is our review data and in the review data we have this predicted structure available so that means the accuracy of the prediction is really high sir i have one another question that is in case of uniprot there are some in trim, tremble that database if we access any tremble sequence and then model it yeah. is there any violation of plagiarism or any what can i say which one, sir? If you access the sequence from the tremble, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, mm. if if you are not getting a sequence in the uh, Swiss prod, right? Yeah. Then we will use the data from the tremble only. Yeah, yeah. From tremble, we can sequence, take the sequence, and then model it. Is yes. there any, any violation of plagiarism or? Any no question of what can I say? No, sir. Of intellectual you, you, property right violation, etc. No, no. In this particular paper, whatever I am showing now, so the protein primary sequence of these two protein, three proteins, PTP2, PTP3, and SWP5, were retrieved from the Uniprot database, and the IDs are these three, and all are there in the tremble only. So if I copy this and uh, We do not have the entry in the reviewed, so it is unreviewed. Yeah. Okay, so this is from the tremble data only. And we do not have much information for this particular protein, very less, that's it. So it is still there in the tremble. Entry status, unreviewed, tremble. All three proteins are from tremble. So that was another question from the reviewer. So why are you taking like in one of the presentation when I presented? So you are taken the proteins for which the structure is not available or even uh, the homology is also very less. Okay, so in this particular paper itself, so the homology is also very less. We did with this side blast and uh, uh, we could not do with the homology modeling. Okay, we got to follow the protein threading and ab initio methods. It could be applied instead because there is no homology. Less similarity with other proteins for the template based. So then we used quarks, which is ab initio based program. ITSR we used, which is a threading based method, which I showed. So then there was like, why did you do like this one? Answer is. We cannot wait for someone to de solve, determine the structure and deposit in the PDB and get the homologous structure and then only perform the docking studies because our work is towards the silkworm. Okay, so the silkworm is getting affected with the pebrin disease. So we wanted to identify a lead molecule to control the disease. So in bioinformatics, we have an option to take the templates and then model the protein. So when we have an option, we use that one. Maybe if somebody determines the structure, then we can correlate how is our model structure with that. 
So we use the smart refiner, organic refine for the energy minimization, model check, Ramachandran plot, winding set prediction, then virtual screening, Swiss similarity search, and then the dynamic simulation. This is the entire procedure that we followed. So yes, you can take from the tremble. That is, there is no restriction that it has to be, the entry should be from Swiss plot. Any, if there are no doubts, uh, then maybe we will stop it here. And then uh, uh, we will do with the protein-protein interaction maybe tomorrow. <laughs>